Hey, adventurers, what's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's only been one more day than it usually is between a Monday stream and a Friday stream. But somehow, it just seems like forever since I've been here flying for you guys. Glad to have you back. Rob Valkyrie has already checked in. Thank you so much for being here, Rob, and thank you so much for that uh, generous gift. I'll be checking that out this week. Um, we're back here in Gibraltar. We are, uh, we are in the DC-3 for the third time in a row, which was not what we had planned to do. We had that crazy situation with the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 content servers being unreachable this past Thursday. We were going to be in the uh, Carinado Mooney Ovation that night. Uh, we were in the DC-3 a week ago tonight where we arrived here at uh, Gibraltar, the beautiful picturesque location that you see here behind us. And uh, then on Thursday we were going to be flying in the uh, in the Carinado Mooney where we're going to fly out to Catalina. We wound up taking this very DC-3 out to Catalina instead. We, uh, we had the Catalina curse throw everything it had at us and uh, we somehow managed to triumph over it and land this DC-3 out at Catalina Island uh, despite uh, everything going wrong that could go wrong and a few things going wrong that couldn't even go wrong. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so welcome back, guys. Gawainian is back with us. Haven't seen you in a little bit, indeed. So uh, thank you for stopping back in. Good to see you. We are, uh, we're Yahoo! resuming. <laughs> Rob Valkyrie is here. Um... Yeah, we we uh, that was one one reason I'm kind of scrambling at the last second to get the stream started was that we got hit with that uh, um, that last second X plane update as well. So we uh, hopefully everything will go smoothly with that. We did install some custom uh, add-on scenery for uh, we had we, we had the the scenery for Gibraltar already. We installed custom scenery for uh, the three islands that we'll be hitting tonight, which is Ibiza, Mallorca, and Menorca. And I think the Ibiza one did not quite take. So I, I don't know if I, I probably skipped a step in the installation process there. So we'll have cu just custom, uh, I'm sorry, just uh, stock default scenery at Ibiza. And then we'll be continuing on to Majorca and Minorca. I'm going to get started pretty quickly, though, because the first flight here is about just a little over two hours. And then the uh, second two hops uh, to uh, from Ibiza to Majorca and Menorca are pretty short ones. So but we'll get this first one underway as quickly as we can. Ken Pryor stopped in. Two-Tone Murphy is here. Hey, what's going on? And uh, not JK stopping in. All right. So, and then you guys can see uh, Rob Valkyrie at least saw that the free co-pilot now has a little bit of a custom response for you. I'm, I'm slowly but surely adding some new features into the furry co-pilot. And uh, one of those is uh, a new command where if you actually, if you hit route, exclamation point route, it's going to pull it into... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna pull into the chat uh, the route that we have filed on VATSIM. Right now we don't have any route filed on VATSIM, so don't try it yet. <laughs> uh, but the other thing that we've added in is uh, a METAR command. So if you would like to see the uh, METAR at a given location, you, you can now do that in the chat bot exclamation point METAR and the uh, ICAO code of the airport you would like the report for. So. Playing around with some new stuff here in the chatbot, and uh, just getting back from a weekend vacation, and uh, just getting stuff updated, getting stuff situated, getting unpacked, and getting the stream started just a little bit late. Uh, but we're hoping to be flying in leg one. Let's see, I put in, uh, I put in departure of uh, 20 after, so we've got uh, not a lot of time to get you guys piled into the airplane here and get the plane started. And we'll talk more after we get airborne here, headed up toward our first destination of Ibiza. So bear with me and uh, uh, be kind to me in the chat as I am probably going to be ignoring you guys for a little bit while I roll through the uh, pre-flight pre -pre -flight checks and get us up and underway. We'll get the battery on. Let's, see, let's get some sound up here. Uh, battery on, no smoking, nav and beacon lights can come on. One, two, and three. I'll get the fuel tanks into mains, left main, and right main. My goal tonight is to properly manage fuel balance in this plane, as I tend not to do most of the time. We'll see if we can get that streak back up to one. Cows can go into open. Props can go full forward. Start up the number two. That is a mix auto rich. 
If I can find the right clunk spot there. There we go. Mix auto rich. Magnetos. Fuel pump. Prime it. Clear it. And start it. Papa Charlie checking in. What's going on? You gotta bear with me if I'm not super interactive in the chat right now as I'm trying to get this first flight underway ASAP just so we don't run so super long tonight. Uh, oil pressure is up right away. Fuel pressure artificially elevated by the electric pump. Now that we switched over to the engine pump, everything is good. Um, all right, we got electric power, inverter on, radio master on. Uh, we need to send the flight plan for leg one. I haven't even done that yet on VATSIM, as I mentioned before. Once I do this, we could play with that route command and see. So the route command that I was uh, that I put in um, to the chat bot here actually pulls from the VATSIM server. So on nights, where are we? Uh, L. Uh, X G B on nights that I'm flying offline. L E I B. Oh great, here comes the weather. <laughs> Thought it was going to be decent via uh, VMC, but we'll see. Uh, no alternate on this one. Uh, we'll go O one twenty. Although that's going to be a little bit of a stretch. First leg is going to be two eighteen. Total fuel five oh five right now. Cruise speed one eighty. Cruise altitude. We'll say ninety five hundred for the first leg, and we are going to be. BFR northeast bound. So it won't, won't be much of a route to look at. Northeast much. Northeast bound. Won't be much of a route to look at, but at least we can check and make sure that the uh, command works. All right, and no nearby controllers as we normally don't see much air traffic control and much traffic uh, this time of day or night. It's the middle of the night over there. Um, so yeah, we don't expect to see much traffic or, or any air traffic control, but I'm on that sim, like I said, just so we can play with that route command and uh, and see that it works okay. Actually, let's go ahead and try that real quick. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Well, we'll try, yeah, we'll try it again. <laughs> it triggered the sound effect. But we'll try it again in a minute, just because I think that on VATSPY, my data feed had not yet updated. Now it says we're going to get to LEIB. Let's try route again. Roads? Well, we're going, we don't oh, need still roads. nothing. Okay, well, we might have to tinker with that. That was working. Um, oh, you know what? Hold on. I think I know why. I know we're going to get going late. But uh, I was testing it on a different user ID than myself because when I was playing with it, I was not the one online. So I guess whoever it was I was playing with is not online right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Edit that. No, I did it. I, did, I changed it to... Uh, changed it to myself. Okay, well, that one might not be working. Let's try this one at least. Okay, so that that worked at least. Yeah, and since we're going to be in over, yeah. So I, I had hoped to do all this uh, VFR. So I think we might have to cheat it. So we'll cheat it. All right, so again, kind of getting underway just a little bit late. I think there might be a cooldown on that command drop, so it might be a couple minutes before you can do that again, and that's just so that people don't spam me with the sound. So give that, give that about three minutes and try it again. Um, all right, let's see. We got the flight plan sent. We got the progress bar updated. Uh, we did check the METAR here, 170, I'm sorry, 010 at 4. Uh, I guess we can take off pretty much eastbound, I guess. Uh, q and is going to be standard now that we're kind of cheating the weather. So this is a 1013, which would be equivalent to 299 or 2, so we'll set that there. We know the field elevation is pretty much 0, and that is accurate. Uh, transponder, I think, I think in Europe, when you're VFR, it's uh, 7,000, and we'll turn that on. Not that it much matters if there's no controllers around. Radio altimeter set to 1x for our departure. 
and uh, fuel quantity should be a total total gallons of 458 so that's going to be 110 115 in each and that's yeah right mains a little lower because it's been sitting on the ramp running with just the right side we'll try and balance that out later but yeah about 110 115 gallons in each tank so that's good all right back inside here we go Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain on behalf of Slant Alpha Airways. We'd like to welcome you aboard Flight 514 with service to Ibiza Island, continuing service to Mallorca and Menorca. We'll be departing from the terminal here momentarily, expecting a departure about maybe five minute delay. Cruising altitude for leg one is going to be 9,500. Flight time once airborne is just over two hours, maybe about two hours, 15 minutes. Buckle in and relax. We'll be underway soon. Thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. All right, get the doors closed. There we go. Get the seatbelt lights on. Get the number one started. So mix auto rich. Magnetos. Oops. Magnetos. Uh, fuel pump. Prime it. Clear it. And start it. All right. One pressure comes up right away. Fuel pump off, generator on. Everything seems like it's balanced out. Good to go. Uh, we can sync our headings. It looks like we're facing about a zero, oh, about a three. What's about a three five seven? About three degrees left of uh, north. So we know this needs to be adjusted. Oops, other way. Three five seven there. Good fixings this here. Hopefully I said hi to everybody else that stopped in. Let's see, top half. Oh, top half of this is target heading, so we can just spin that around to zero. And then bottom half of this we want to sink to uh, 357. Okay, that's done. Uh, flight controls, we'll just check and yeah, blah, 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 left, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm everything around, blah, 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 done. Uh, trim should be neutralized, which it probably is. That's ah, a little bit. There we go. I'm going to set flaps one. Tail wheel can go unlocked. We'll go taxi light on. And I think we are ready. All right, we're going to be departing eastbound, so we'll taxi out to the right. We're facing north. That means when we get out to the runway, we'll need to back taxi out to the west. And we do, by the way, since we are connected to VATS and we do probably need to be diligent about announcing intentions and such, especially here when we'll need a lot of time on the runway. I don't see anybody coming in either direction. I'm going to pivot that way just so we can get a better look. Okay, I think we're fine there. Gibraltar traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors, back taxi and runway 09 for a VFR eastbound departure, Gibraltar. Hi, Rob, if you want to try that METAR for Cleveland again, of course, I know you guys are getting some some pretty good weather there. That should work now. Just to play with it. Like I said, I think I put in a three-minute, a five-minute user timeout cooldown and a three minute overall command cooldown just so that that little clip from Gilligan's Island theme doesn't keep hitting my ear. There we go. Of course we are on the runway so we really ought to have anti-collision, landing lights, taxi light can come off, uh, pitot heat and fuel pumps. Pitot heat, you know, you really don't want to turn on until you're getting ready to have good airflow over that pitot tube, but we're not going to be too long down there turning around, lining up and getting out, so I think we'll be fine. 
Um, hydro pressure is good. Cows can go into a trail. Flight attendants prepare cabin for departure. Probably should have done a run up. But I don't want to, like, like I said, we are on VATSIM and we don't want to take more time on the runway than we need to here just to make sure that we're not in someone's way. Yeah, we had some rough weather roll through here in uh, Maryland as well when I was, my wife and I were down at the shore, so we had it about five degrees warmer, which was just enough to make it rain rather than ice for us. But it was a <laughs> was not an insignificant amount of rain either. Did have a little bit of flooding down there. All right, so get this thing lined up. Get the tailwheel locked. Departing at 8:25, so about five minutes after we had originally intended. Not too bad. Gibraltar traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor departing runway Niner for VFR Northeast bound departure, Gibraltar. All right, tensor pressure's all looking good. Engine indications all normal. Responding symmetrically, we'll set 45 on the manifold. Give it a little bit of light steering with the brakes until the tail goes flying. The tail will go flying on its own. Okay, there we've got rudder authority now. Keep the plane level. And with that flaps one departure. No better start in getting up the time the ship was tossed. The plane will just lift off the runway on its own. Gear can come up. Coming up on 400, we can get flaps up. Nose down, build some airspeed. 25 and 40 on the uh, power, cruise, uh, climb power rather. Turn into the northeast. Gibraltar traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors. Clear runway Niner. Uh, left 45, northeast bound VFR departure, Gibraltar. All right, so 25 and 40, get the uh, fuel pumps off. Make sure I did everything else here. I think I'm good. We have flaps up. Yeah, I got flaps up. Okay, and per sky vector, our first leg here, again, 825 was our departure time in terms of Eastern, uh, turning to a 078 and 159 miles to, to this point out here on the southeast coast of Spain. So that's our target heading now is a bit, about a 080. I think that's what it said, 078. Is that what it just said a second ago? Yeah. So we've turned, we've overturned it kind of north and east, north up the coast. We went ahead kind of more eastbound really. About a zero eight zero. And we'll maintain that. Going up to 9,500 for this first leg. Again, this first leg is going to be our longest one of the evening, just over two hours. And then we'll do two quick half hour hops from Ibiza to Mallorca, then Mallorca to Menorca. Yeah, you guys up further north than me in Baltimore. You guys got uh, some pretty good snowfall up there in the northeast. We were pretty much right on the line. Baltimore and D.C. was pretty much right on the line where it broke from snow to rain. But like I said, we were we were down at the shore, so we were a little bit further south and east, well within the rain band there, and got got quite a bit of it, but uh, no accumulating snow.
All right, we're going to increase throttles just a touch, maintain that 40 as we climb. That throttles are going to need to be nudged forward ever so slightly to maintain that 40 manifold pressure. Looks like we're drifting a little bit right of that 080. And again, that first leg, 159 miles. So you figure if it's going to be about three miles a minute, of course, we're climbing 59 divided by 3, 53 minutes. So we're climbing a little bit slower. You know, we're climbing out at about 120, so we're climbing at about two miles a minute. Once we get up to cruise, we'll be hitting that three mile a minute mark. So we'll say maybe just, just for round figures, probably about an hour on this first leg here. And we're just gonna kind of dead reckon it to that point. I'll show you again on the map in just a moment. Again, I'm just, just trying to get the thing airborne and, and, and progress underway. Hang on a second, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, Rob Valkyrie says he loves the snow. Well, he lives in the right part of the country for it then. <laughs> I love snow too. I mean, it's beautiful and it's majestic, kind of. Love that uniform layer of white all over everything. It's a gorgeous look and I don't really mind it. It doesn't, around here, we don't get it too much to where it's, you know super impactful to your life very often. The Winter Wonderland, says Jason Knapp, indeed. I love that, Jason Knapp. Jason Knapp, that's very poetic, man. We'll say what he says. He says, there's no other weather which so transforms the scene and brings a dull quiet to all sounds. I love that. That is deep, brother. <laughs> and everything smells less. Says uh, Nalok. <laughs> Nalok, good to see you here. It's the most snow we've seen in years, says Ken Prayer. Yeah, I, I won't say years, plural, for us here in Baltimore, but last year... Um, last winter season we really didn't get any accumulating snow to speak of it was it was the um, pretty much the lowest snowfall total on record since the records uh, were, were started here pretty much zero so it's a nice change of pace to actually get a little bit get the nose down I want to be climbing at that 100 VY in this plane is essentially 110 knots and that marking there is not for VY. That little yellow mark on the airspeed, that's, that's, that's I think my, uh, like, max, it's, I don't know if that's maximum gear extension speed or max maneuvering speed. I forget what that mark actually is, but it, it happens to coincide pretty closely with VY, so I kind of use that yellow mark as my target for our climb out. Nalu, I said Nalok earlier, I'm sorry, Nalu. Haven't seen you around in a little bit, good to have you back here. Still gotta edge that throttle up, you see, right over here. Well, first of all, this is the yellow mark on the gauge I was talking about, the airspeed gauge. It's kind of what I aim for in my climb out, pretty close to VY, so makes a nice easy visual reference. And then here is where we're seeing the uh, Manifold pressure likes to decay as you climb, so I kind of bump it up a little bit, keep it right on that 40 mark there. Hand flying this departure. And again, we're, uh, we're not on any particular navigation plan except kind of a dead reckoning of the 080, so kind of loosely following that 080 heading. Als <laughs> Troll South Miami says, uh, waiting for some of that snow to get down here. Let's see if we get any. Al, here's a, here's a, here's a competition for you. Hold your breath until it arrives. 
Yeah, you and my parents, Al. Love to rub them in our faces. <laughs> Got some of, you, some of you saw that on our previous stream. My ill-fated attempt to troll my parents about the snow. <laughs> yes, you did, Al. But it's okay. We love you anyway. Al says I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> it's a legitimate expectation. Um, yes, when pigs fly, Miami will freeze over. Yeah, when the... When we get up to cruise, by the way, going to 9,500, when we get up to cruise, I will uh, I will show you, th for those of you who missed it on our previous stream, my ill-fated attempt to tr troll my parents on Facebook about the uh, about the snow. Now, some, of, some of you guys I know here in the chat tonight saw it already, but uh, those of you who missed it, it's worth it. My mother threw it right back in my face. <laughs> so there's 85, so that's one to go. <laughs> uh, I wonder if I wonder if the route come in and work now. Rose? There we go. There we go. So I just needed a moment for the database to uh, to update on VATSIM. So you can see there's really not much. Since it's a VFR flight plan, all I put into the route was VFR north eastbound. So not really much to see tonight. But for future reference, guys, you can now use that route command. Some visitors to the channel tend to come in and, and use that and, and to, to, uh, to no avail previously just to kind of get a sense of what we were doing tonight. Um, but that now works again. It just, uh, it just, it pulls from what's on that. So Mighty Caveman, no, we don't do Minecraft on this channel, man. Um, it's all, it's all flight simulation on this channel, but welcome. Thank you for stopping by. All right, Mighty Caveman, see, I think I remember seeing you here before. Maybe once. But yeah, now we, we're all a flight sim channel, man. There's 8,500. Sorry, let's level it out. Not 9,500, rather. Level it out before I miss it. All right, and again, once you once you level it out, you're still going to have to continue to add down trim gradually as the plane speeds up and generates more lift. So, in the meantime, I will. Pull the power down, cruise is uh, 23 and 34, at least those are my numbers. Let's not plummet back down to 95, let's gradually get it back down to 95. Oh, well, uh, all right, so there's 23 and 34. Still gonna add a little bit of down trim if she wants to keep coming up. We'll spin the uh, spin the target heading around to kind of match where the direction that we're going. Actually, we really want it to be on eight zero eight zero. Alright, there's zero eight zero. 
Get it trimmed back out to 9500. And speed looks like it's more or less settled in. We can go ahead and close the uh, close the cow flaps most of the way. We'll leave them just a touch open. We know in this plane you should be able to close them fully, but in this plane we know the engine modeling is not perfect as far as the uh, temperatures and stuff, so we'll keep the cow flaps just a touch open. Hang on, Al, I will get that, that message in just a moment. I'm just about to hand the controls off to uh, our friend Autopilot here. I think we're fairly well stable here, 9500 and 080, so let's do it. Autopilot, heading and level. Good. I'll, I'll go ahead and run through the, the a sink of the uh, heading. It's just to make sure our magnetic says we're just about on, what is that, 079? It's not too bad. And uh, that one matches. This one's a degree off. Whoops. Other way. There we go. All right. So we're, we should be looking good there. Al says, whenever we want to see snow, I just unplug the TV antenna and crank up the uh, AC. There you go. There you go, man. Whatever gets the job done. All right. So let us, now that we are, oh, and uh, a couple other things to do here at Cruise. Let's just make sure, get the uh, fasten seatbelt signs off. Come back over here. Uh, mix can go to auto lean. I can get that. Yeah, there, I hope that's where they clunk in. Yep. Mix to auto lean. Cows close, and we'll get the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, no, we actually want to run the left main. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live dangerously and try to balance these mains out. Yes, yeah, so we actually want to run the left main until it's down to 90, and then we'll switch over to the oxen. So I'm gonna live dangerously. I always, when I unbalance the plane, I always forget. So we'll hopefully remember to come back to that in a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to my phone in my hand as a reminder that uh, the, the tanks, that the tank configuration is unbalanced. So that should do it. Do a quick announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude of 9,500 and have turned off the fasten seatbelt signs. Your cabin crew is going to come around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and leftover Valentine message candies. So relax and enjoy the flight. Alright. So. Aqua gets up and takes a stretch. Welcome back to the to the uh, broadcast and to the uh, aircraft, Aqua. Glad to have you along. Let's kind of keep an eye on this left main until it gets right down to 90. Again, the right main was a little bit lower because we were sitting on the ramp running just the number two engine, as we tend to do. Kind of acts as our auxiliary power unit, which you don't have uh, a de facto APU in this aircraft. But running that number two while the boarding process finishes up is what gets us electrical power. And uh, it's, it's also kind of where the tradition of starting the number two first comes from. All right, let me go back to what I was saying about my parents and trying to uh, trying to troll them I, again. You guys that were on the stream the other night, Aqua says, "Look at you remembering to switch tanks." I always forget this thing. Well, what what happens on Aqua is I'm I'm running both engines off the left main because I'm trying to rebalance it with the right main, which would wound up a little bit lighter. What normally happens on this stream is I will run it in that asymmetrical configuration, and then I'll forget, and then I'll drain all the fuel out of the left main, <laughs> and then suddenly remember like hour, an hour later when there's hardly any fuel left in it, and then spend the rest of the night trying in vain to fix the problem. So that's why I'm holding on to my cell phone in my left hand as a reminder that I'm running an unbalanced configuration right now. Um, but let me go to back to that post. Yeah, and again, I gotta gotta snip it, and then I gotta redact it just a little bit. Check the names of the guilty here. And again, a uh, few of you saw this already, and I apologize. Uh, 
that's worth a worth another look. All right, so again, I know we are we at the point now. Nah, they're pretty well balanced. Let's go ahead and switch into the auxes. So we'll to the right and right aux. Go ahead and switch. And uh, left and left aux. And I think we're looking pretty good. And again, zero eight zero for about an hour is what we said. 159 miles. And we got the coast well off to our left. We got the mountains rising up kind of over there, yes, yeah, so we can kind of see that the terrain matches what we think we should be seeing off to the left. And then uh, further up ahead, there should be a point where it comes out and meets us. We're kind of going to round the corner here, just to the east of Almira. And round that corner and then turn to about a 0, 050 0 for 88 miles, and that should take us right up to this point too. We'll graze that and then continue on on that very same heading up to Ibiza. So really just kind of dead reckoning with the timing. The 159 miles we knew that was, you know, 180 would be three miles a minute for one hour. Um, but we knew that the first handful of uh, moments out from our departure, we were not making three miles a minute as we were still in the climb. So we figured about an hour. I mean, we'll, we will be able to, to recognize that, uh, that terrain point there pretty readily, I think. Also depends on the wind aloft drift as well. But as long as we can still see coastline off to our left, I think we're okay. We can always tune in one of these NDBs or the VORs here. We got an Almira VOR on 114.1. We got an Almira uh, NDB, but it looks like we got two of them. We got one on 310, one on 284. So we can, uh, we can use one of those three nav aids or a combination thereof to kind of cross check our position if we need to. But for right now, oh, I can put my phone down. We, we balance the tanks. <laughs> for right now, I think we're good. All right, let me show you. Let me show you this this Facebook post. Uh, so I'll preface the story again, you guys. Uh, my parents, who uh, are in their early 70s, have lived in Maryland their entire lives, and I've lived in Maryland for the majority of my entire life. Only for a brief moment, I lived in very eastern West Virginia, so just just barely outside of Maryland. Um, but lived in this area more or less my entire life. My parents, you know, for seven decades have lived in the Maryland area. Just last year, just last September, um, up and moved to Florida. They had been talking for years about maybe retiring to um, North Carolina or South. I think they were talking about Myrtle Beach, maybe, South Carolina. Um, my dad wanted to retire to Virginia Beach um, because he wanted to kind of have an apartment overlooking the water and watch the Navy ships go in and out. Big Navy buff, my dad. Um, so they've been kind of kicking it around for years, but you know, my, my sisters, you know, got a young in and another one on the way and we were really kind of expecting that they would stick around in the area for a while. Well, last year they just up and moved to Florida, just, you know, announced, Hey, we're, we're down in Florida visiting some friends. Oh, and by the way, we're house hunting. And then next thing you knew, it was like, Hey, we got a contract. They were moving in September. So they've been in Florida for what? Six months. If that, yeah, not even six months, five months. And so this is their first time being you know, away, like way far away from their kids and away far away from snow. Uh, they moved down to the Gulf Coast down there. And so I was teasing them a little bit, you know, once we got this you know, this first big snowfall in Maryland that we had seen in, you know, probably almost two years, uh, I was teasing them a little bit. And I said, uh, I said, mom and dad, since I'm sure you guys have been feeling homesick, here you go. And I tagged my, my mom and, you know, my mom and my dad in it. My mom fires back right away, like, without skipping a beat. She fires back and she says, beautiful, enjoy the snow. Post more pictures so we can see how beautiful the snow is from our pool side. <laughs> you know, I had it coming. I had it coming. It's all good though, it's all good. So it very much reminds me, and I, I got so, so two streams in a row, I got triggered into that story because of Al South MIA. So there you go, Al. You remind me of my parents. Does that make you happy? <laughs> what else we got to talk about, guys? Since we finally got up and running on this uh, on this first leg, I mean, 
Do we want to play around with position plotting? We can kind of keep track of our position. I can show you guys how to... Uh... <laughs> Al says, that's what I call a great sense of reality or humor, right? <laughs> both, actually. My mother keeps me well-grounded in both. Uh, I actually, you know, I have, as I said in the previous stream, um, you know, she, she's, I mean, she's very, very smart lady. Always been a very smart lady. Very awesome. Both my parents, very, uh, very fun people. Um, smart and, uh, and, and witty, but, but never had that level of sass as, you know, as, as my sister and I were kids. The sass has kind of come in in the adult life. And I think it's, I think it's because of me. I think it's because it's my, my sarcastic, um, wit she has, has finally, you know, she's finally had to develop the tools to fire back at me. And, uh, obviously she's certainly now my, uh, my sarcasm, uh, equal. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. You know, just, just you know, try and poke a little fun at her, and she just s smacked it right back at me, and I was proud of her. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's take a moment, I guess, as we've got you know probably at least a half an hour yet until we get out to this uh, this first su substantial waypoint. Let's talk about some stuff going on on the stream. Um, we have been, we've made a couple change, we've made a small change to our monthly raffle drawing. Now, as I said in our previous stream, for those of you who have been participating in those monthly drawings, actually I'll tell you what, real quick, let's take a quick spin through the ending gauges. Looks like the cylinder head temps are a little on the high side. You, I mean, they run Hi, anyway, and they're they're in the green, but they're flirting with that yellow. I'm gonna open the cow flaps just a touch. Oops, open the cow flaps just a touch more. Uh, and, and again, we've talked to get about this AeroWorks DC3. This is the uh, this is what we're, we're flying tonight. This is the AeroWorks Douglas DC3 and X Plane 11, and it's a completely freeware product. If you find, you'll find it actually as the AeroWorks A E R O W O R X C47 Skytrain. But you know, many of us. A lot of us fly it as, as a civilian DC-3. Um, but the uh, the engine model in this plane is not 100% perfect. You, you basically get your choice of, of one of two unrealistic situations. Number one, uh, I mean, you should be able to run it in auto lean with the correct power settings for cruise and then, uh, you know, run the, the cowls fully closed. Um, when you do that in this plane, though, the cylinder head temps tend to run away, and they tend to kind of spike up above 300. Now, the good news is there's no actual failure of the engines that's modeled with that. So if you choose to, to opt for the realistic configuration and ignore the cylinder head temps uh, behaving unrealistically, you are more than welcome to do that. The other thing you can do is unrealistically run with the cow flaps slightly open at cruise and then the cylinder head temps will behave themselves. So again, you've got your choice of one of two semi-unrealistic situations there. So, there you go. I opt. I opt to kind of monitor the engine temps. And, and, you know, in previous streams, you've seen me do, do the opposite. You've seen me just run the cow flaps fully closed. It, it, does, it does impact drag a, a little bit. I think you'd lose a couple of knots in, uh, in cruise speed with the cow slightly open. But, uh, but you got your choice there, and I will and we'll calibrate the first officer's altimeter just for the heck of it, even though we're not really looking at it. Um, you get your choice of two unrealistic situations, and like I said, you, you can kind of go with whichever one you want. Uh, I think I guess it's not a bad thing to do as we check the uh, as we check the engine gauges. I guess one of the engine gauges we should check would be the fuel gauges, and everything seems to be good. Right mains are balanced almost exactly 90 gallons. Uh, with the left main, left main, and right main, and then the right aux and left aux are balanced pretty pretty evenly. Not exactly, but pretty evenly there. Just about 110 gallons each, so we're doing good. We've got the fuel management down so far. Let's see if I can mess it up later on. Dora in Mexico is with us. Howdy, howdy Dora. Plant, uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We're flying from Gibraltar out into the Mediterranean. We're going to do some island hopping. This first leg tonight takes us out to... Uh, the island of Ibiza, and uh, that's about just about a two and a half, two and change hour flight. Them's my shoes, says hello. 
And uh, then from Ibiza, we got a little bit of a, uh, just a little half hour hop out here to Mallorca. And then another little half hour hop out here to Menorca. So that's the plan for this evening. Uh, a three hopper. We're going to visit three islands, three Mediterranean islands in our Douglas DC-3 tonight. We're still waiting to get out to this point just off the coast of Almira. And uh, as we kind of cruise along out toward Almira, we're just kind of dead reckoning this, uh, this heading and distance. You know, we're estimating the distance based on the fact that we took off from Gibraltar at about 8.25 Eastern time, so about uh, half an hour ago. But uh, you know, as we get closer to that turn point there, we can actually kind of take some readings off of this VOR, get some distance and, and radio measurements to, to confirm our position. I mean, uh, looking to the left, it looks like the terrain that we expect to see is matching up indeed with the terrain that's on the map here. So I would think we're somewhere in this area where we're starting to see these 10,000 foot peaks, maybe up ahead. We're at 9,500 now, so we should expect to see a few that are kind of level with our airplane, and it looks like we do. So I would say we're progressing as we expect to so far. Might even be making a little bit better time than we think. So we can check, we can check that uh, in a little bit. But that's a recap of the plan. I had started to say a moment ago, and I shall say again. Oh, did I close the? I think I closed the prize vault. It's, uh, Bear with me for just a second. Got to close some things so I can open some things. I've got a lot of crap open on this second screen. <laughs> a lot of crap. Okay. There we go. Um, so those of you who are have, have been around the channel for a while. Oh, that's the other thing. We'll talk about Flight Sim Expo in just a little bit. Um... But those of you, we'll start with the, the monthly raffle drawing. Those of you who have been around the channel a little while, you know that we have started since uh, since November, right? This is the fourth one? Yes, yeah, so we did November, December, January. And this will be our fourth monthly drawing. And uh, so the way we work that is you accumulate those alphabets points, those switch channel points there at the bottom of your chat panel. You got a little alphabet serial icon. We got Al South. Uh, uh, as if on cue, Al South redeems himself a, uh, a six-fer in the raffle ticket. So like I was just saying, the way that works is that you accumulate those channel points for hanging out with us. If you want to enter our monthly drawing, you can do so by redeeming 1,000 of those channel points at a time for one entry into that monthly raffle. If you happen to want to save up until you hit 5,000, as Al just did, he has redeemed 5,000 at a chunk, and that gets you six. That gets you a bonus entry. Six for the price of five. So uh, we'll do that over the course of the month on our last stream of the month, or sometimes the first stream of the following month. Uh, we'll announce you know, specifics as we get closer. But basically, uh, at the end of each month, more or less, we do a drawing out of the uh, Slant Alpha Fish Bowl for all of the, 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 of the entries that went into that month's raffle. And uh, we've recently made a change to this, guys. It used to be that the winner got their choice of a $25 Amazon.com gift card or a $25 xplane.org store gift card. Well, you still have those choices, so we have, we have taken nothing away. But we have now added some additional choices you can make. And you are more than welcome, if you uh, should happen to be the winner, to uh, choose one of those two gift cards or choose any of these other prizes with which we've, which we have kind of a listing of what we've got in stock at the moment and you can choose from anything that we've got here and uh, we've got a black triple uh, x slant alpha sweatshirt with the slant alpha logo we've got uh we don't do i have the sweatshirt hanging up i think i just have the i have the two t-shirts hanging up so the sweatshirt looks very similar uh, to what's uh, hanging up over my right shoulder there. Uh, we got a couple of the uh, t-shirts up there. We've got uh, a variety of different sizes available for those and you can choose uh, one of the two X's has the logo printed slightly smaller than what you see here but uh, uh, if that becomes the only two X left over then you're more than welcome to choose that at that point if, if, you, if that's the best option. Um, we've got the ball cap, the trucker cap, the white, uh, the white uh, brimmed hat up there. Um, that you can uh, you can choose from, and 
We've also got the Slant Alpha mouse pad. I've got that. This is mine, but I've got one just like it that is uh, up for grabs if you happen to be the winner of that monthly raffle. We've got the Slant Alpha coffee mug, which you got one of those hanging up there on the hanger. And, uh, and then you've got the choice of those gift cards. And if you prefer the gift cards as opposed to my merchandise, you are not going to hurt my feelings in any way, shape, or form. Oh, I did have that up. So if you were astute viewers, you noticed just now that I had it at the top uh, of the left, and I had it a second copy over here to the right. <laughs> but I did indeed have that one open in one of my tabs. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so you've got your choice of any of, of the Slant Alpha Adventures merchandise that I just named off, or, if, or you, or like I said, if you don't want any of my stuff, you're more than welcome to hang on to that uh, notion of getting that $25 Amazon gift card or $25 explain.org store gift card. Whichever of those makes you the happiest is what makes me the happiest. Uh, so if you happen to be the one winning at the end of that monthly drawing, again, end of February or very beginning of March is when we pull that next ticket out. Um, you are free to make whatever choice you like. Al, let me get you uh, those uh, six tickets in there. Al said, I tried to buy some stock with those alphabets, but the company I was eyeing got demoted from NASDAQ, so now I only, can only use them here. Uh, if it was, uh, yeah, if it was GameStop, then, uh, yeah, I probably would have recommended against that anyway. <laughs> uh, we got Dance My Shoes redeeming for six raffle tickets. Let's go ahead and Get those answered into the system here. There you go. That's as easy as that, guys. And again, uh, Al says, do you have any merch for furry friends? My pooch will look amazing in that slant alpha shirt. You know what? I'll have to check my vendor. <laughs> I don't know, Al. That's a good question. I don't at the moment. But uh, certainly would be appropriate of me to offer that, wouldn't it? That's that's a good thought. That will, you know what? That's gonna go on my that's gonna go on my personal to-do list to research that this week. It would be only too appropriate to offer uh, doggy merchandise on this channel <laughs> as much as we uh, celebrate the presence of our furry co pilots here. That's pretty good. I like it. Slant out for food for thought, indeed. Well, that's uh, that's definitely got to go in the to-do list here. sure that made it into the to-do list. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Very nice, Al. My own Slant Alpha Kibbles label. No thank you. I don't need the liability. <laughs> Alright, so I'm wondering, guys, if this little point here is the point that we are, are navigating to for our first leg. It's a little earlier than I would expect. I guess we're making better time. What's our indicated airspeed? Our indicated is 145-ish. Um, we're at almost 10,000 feet, so you'd add 20% to that, so 14.5, so about another 30 knots to that, 140, 50, 60, 70, so about 180 knots, and that's typically what you get in this plane, three miles a minute. So I would expect, would have expected that first leg to be, you know, pretty much an hour. You know, we did say it's not, it was not quite 180 miles, it was 150 some. But 100, almost 160, so, and we knew that the first uh, handful, we really, I, I could do the math a little bit more specifically to figure out exactly how long our climb took and probably should have taken note of the time and then and then a note of how much of this leg we did uh, at cruise speed. So, you know, I'm kind of 
kind of doing this a little more loosely than I should, really. But I have a feeling, and of course we can look to the left and we can see if there's a little inlet there, we should see this kind of... I mean, this should be pretty easy to verify visually, right? Where's my... Uh, yeah, there we go. We, I mean, if, as, we, as we come past this and we see this first point here and the second point here, and we see this kind of inlet with a point in the middle of it and we see a runway right there, those should be pretty identifiable marks to confirm our position. So, so we're looking at a uh, kind of a, an outlet that's got mountains right on the edge of it. And up ahead is an outlet that doesn't have mountains right on the edge of it. So uh, what I would think we might be looking at is so we might be back a little ways where we're seeing this outcropping here kind of behind us and this outcropping here ahead of us and then there would be that third one up ahead with uh, mountains right on the tip of it so I think you know, we, you know, I mean, with, the, with the downwind sim binoculars we can kind of see that there is you know in the haze up ahead there is kind of a third maybe a little uh, outcropping there so you know we might be closer to uh, Closer to on our time target than I thought, maybe. But it would would mean that the airport is kind of, really kind of up, right through where that uh, that that support pillar is, that windshield uh, windscreen support pillar is. So we'll keep flying along for just a few minutes. Homemade cookies with uh, you know grain free and, and grass fed chicken liver. No, 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 and no. No, we got enough snacks around this house. <laughs> we don't need we don't need to go into the snack manufacturing business. Our puppies are pretty well fed. Our freight co-pilots they can treat it pretty well. But uh, laying off a doggy sweater actually sounds like a perfect idea. So we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely research that out. I don't yet have, by the way an online merch store. We're, we're still kind of looking at options for that. A couple folks recommended Redbubble to me. I haven't I haven't yet got on and, and looked at that in detail. I wasn't happy with the... There's an online merch store that's built into the streaming service that I use, and uh, I wasn't terribly happy with the quality of those products. I, th the, I didn't like the way the logo came out on those. And... Uh, there weren't really any options to adjust them that I saw, so you know I was I just felt like uh, oh it looks like we're looks like our manifold pressure has slipped a little bit should be about 34 there I don't know if I bumped that or not bump that or if it's just a difference in atmospheric conditions from there to here. But that should help us get a few extra knots. Of course, that means additional down trim. But uh, since we got it on autopilot right now, our there's auto. It's just yeah, you can get you can see a little bit of additional down trim going in. Little by little, as the plane picks up a couple knots extra speed. Uh, so we covered the monthly drawing, right? Yes, okay. I guess the next thing we want to talk about, and of course we've been talking about it for a while. Um, oh, I guess I wanted to look for something here real quick. Wanted to, whoops, wanted to link you to something here if I can find it. Hold on.
Mr. Melvin Leroy. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Furry co-pilot. I've, I've been teaching furry co-pilot some new tricks. Mr. Melvin Leroy is here, and uh, he's got that automatic shout out there from the furry co-pilot. Melvin Leroy. Furry co-pilot is such a good boy. Yeah, man. Uh. I'm not sure, yeah, uh, I've had the glasses on the whole time. I can fly without them, uh, but you might want to up your landing rate predictions when I when I do. <laughs> Alright, so I found the channel I'm looking for. Melvin, I just saw a Superman commercial, there you go. Oh, okay, cool, it's here, it's here. Alright, there you go, guys. Um... So, Flight Sim Expo, we've been talking about it for a little while. It's the uh, the big North American flight simulator convention, community-driven, and uh, put on by our friends at the Boston Virtual Air TCC on that sim. And this will be the uh, the third one, hopefully, fingers crossed, if, uh, if, uh, if things go according to plan. We did 2018 in Las Vegas, 2019 was in Orlando, 2020 unfortunately canceled due to... Uh, COVID-related restrictions in 2021. They're hoping very much to host in uh, San Diego, California, June 4th through the 6th um, at the uh, Town & Country Resort. I am definitely planning to be there. As a matter of fact, I'm grabbing my phone because I have myself a little hours countdown. And I'll, I'll see if I can see if I can get this up on screen. I think this is going to be the best way to do it. 2,554 hours until Flight Sim Expo 2021. Um, now that counts down to the morning of Thursday the 3rd at 8 o'clock because that is when I leave the Slant Alpha Studios to head toward uh, BWI Airport to pick up my flight. Got my flights already booked, got my uh, hotel already booked, and uh, got my registration already, already taken care of, so good to go. Fingers crossed. Um, Big news there from Flight Sim Expo, and I'll show you this link in just a minute. The big news from Flight Sim Expo is they have opened registration. They have published their speaking uh, speaking schedule, their seminar seminar and panel schedule. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Of course, Saturday and Sunday, you can uh, attend in person for the price of $70. If you add $10, it makes it $80, and it gives you the uh, access to the Captain's Corner seminars on Friday afternoon for possibly uh, a fifth one being added, but currently four seminars Friday afternoon for those of you who are getting into town early enough to attend those. Uh, so $80 all access for the weekend, $15 if you, $15 if you prefer on the all access online pass if you're not able to attend in person. Either way, those are fully refundable, not only if the event itself is canceled or changed, but if you personally decide that you are not able to make the trip for whatever reason. So uh, even if the event goes on as planned, but for whatever reason you decide um, you're not comfortable with the health situation at the time of the event, you are more than welcome to cancel without any obligation. So they are being super duper flexible with those registrations. So the other thing is they are using advanced registrations as a very heavily weighted metric on event status decisions coming up guys so if you have any inkling that you might want to go to this thing in june register now flightsimexpo.com they're not even charging cards until at least march maybe even april um, but they need those registration numbers in order to take those to the vendors and to the venue to uh to substantiate the fact that they are are gung-ho with with putting this event on and getting as many of those vendors and exhibitors out there uh, for us so uh, if, if you want to support the event, you know, $70, 80, $70 for Saturday and Sunday, $80 for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and, uh, and even if you, you're not planning on attending in person, you know, the online pass of $15 still at least shows enough interest to the uh, developers and vendors and exhibitors um, that they you know, will have a, a benefit to coming out and putting on a show. So, so please, if nothing else, to support the event, consider it a $15 donation to support FlightSimExpo.com. Again, FlightSimExpo, www.FlightSimExpo.com. Uh, the other thing is our friend Mustafa uh, did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Evan Ryder of uh, Boston Virtual ARTCC and um, FlightSimExpo. 
we did a, a, a one hour question and answer and mostly wound up being about the event status and what's going what's gonna to de determine whether or not they're able to hold the event. So uh, there were some other questions about uh, vendors and exhibitors. Uh, but here's, here's Mustafa's channel on YouTube, The Flying Moose. And this uh, right here, he's got the interview, the one-on-one. -on -one. Again, it runs almost an hour. Um, and I will send you the link to the video here in the, to the stream chat. So there that is. Please check that out. And it answers many of your questions that you might have about the event status. Uh, but the key points, as I said, are the fact that, uh, you know, that, that the pricing is $70 for Saturday, Sunday, $80 for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The, the um, panel schedule and speaker schedule and presentation schedule is posted. It is uh, the problem they're going to continue to add to it. Uh, but it is posted over there at www.flightsinexpo.com, so you can check that out. Um, many of us uh, streaming media partners are attending in person. And that list is those is on uh, www.flightsimexpo.com as well. Uh, let's show you that, by the way. There we are. The, these media partners. Oh, where we go? Maybe it's here. There we go. So these media partners are uh, planning to attend in person including one, a couple there that you might recognize. And, uh, and again, if you have questions, kind of, I've, I've covered the basics as far as they're being super, super flexible. Uh, so not only will they refund any of your registration fees if the event is not held, but they will refund any of your registration fees if for whatever reason you personally decide you're not able to make it even after you initially attended to. And they did say uh, multiple times in that one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, Moose that they're not even charging cards. You, you can go on there and pre-register now, but they're not even making charges to your card until at least March and maybe even you know April or May. Wouldn't it be great, says Al, if Laminar announces the release of X-Plane 12 with Google Maps support? That would be amazing. I yeah, don't know. I, I know that Laminar is one of the uh, companies that, that tends to go out every year to these uh, to these uh, flight sim conferences. Uh, I have not heard anything about uh, X Plane 12, but I guarantee you that uh, Flight Sim 2020's scenery rendering engine uh, caused quite a stir over at Laminar Research, and I'm sure they're working on something similar at the moment. It uh, wouldn't surprise me at all that that, that it's in the works. But uh, I think that, uh, I, you know, who knows? I mean, maybe. Maybe they would have something out this quickly, but I, I think that that would be kind of a short development timeline. But who knows? I think they tend to be pretty pretty aggressive uh, over there as far as their ability to put stuff together. And again, we did get somewhat of an update today. So this is Ortho 4 XP, but it looks like I might be missing an Autogen mask or something. This is all flat. Well, maybe. Uh, we've got some got some autogen buildings and some roads down there. Was that buildings or is that, yeah, that, that, that is uh, some sort of interestingly tilled farmland? Not quite sure. Okay, there's a town. And uh, we were talking about this second town in here, kind of in this little, this little inlet. Uh, and there's a there's kind of a middle middle tip there to that. We, we talked about seeing. So here's what I think we're seeing. I think it's the town of uh, uh, El, Almira. We got this almost kind of M-shaped here. Let's look for a river that comes out of the middle. And we got this airport here kind of on, on the right-hand hump. So let's see if we indeed see that. Well, I don't think we're looking right at it, guys. Downwind some binoculars are helping us out, of course. But uh, yeah, to the left, there should be a river that kind of heads up into the middle there. Yeah, I'd say all that is consistent with what we're seeing. So uh, I would say that uh, it's 918. We said 9825 is when we took off, and we said this first leg would take us about an hour to get to this point. And so far, so good. Our dead reckoning is kind of dead on here. That's a, uh, I don't know if that's the first, but it may be a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> Al says they need to announce something other than that crappy mobile app they did a while back. Yeah, I'm not not big on the X Plane mobile. I mean, I need a I need a yoke and I need a full full screen and 
you know, all that kind of stuff. There's a market for everybody, says Al. Yeah, indeed. I mean, there's, it, there's. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible to have like kind of a stripped-down simulator that you can kind of take around with you and tool with if you got a couple hours to kill, or maybe on a flight, you know. <laughs> on that five-hour flight from Baltimore to San Diego that I'll be taking in June, maybe I'll download the uh, X-Plane mobile app for that. <laughs> But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all to find that X, X Plane 12 is actively being developed and will, would include um, some sort of scenery rendering engine similar to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020s. But I have not heard anything about details or, you know, I, I, that's all just speculation, but seems to be, you know, educated speculation. But I've, I've heard no rumors to that, to that effect that it's actually happening or any kind of a timeline. All right, guys. So I think the plan is going to be, once we round this point, we're going to turn north and east. 051 for 88 miles. miles per hour! So 051 for 88 miles, although it's going to take us less than an hour, I hope. It should take us about a half an hour, in fact. And that will take us up to this point, just outside of San Javier. And then uh, 051 again, so we're going to kind of maintain that 051 for another 124 miles. So it's really another 200 miles to go after we round the bend here. So, so just over an hour, you know, since we're making 180 miles, 180 nautical miles per hour, 180 knots is nautical miles per hour. So 180 of those. So if we got 88 there, and 124 there, so it's going to be um, just over 200, 210 maybe. So another hour and a quarter basically. So I had said from the outset this is going to be about a two and a quarter hour flight. And so it looks like the time estimates are, are holding up so far. But we'll turn to the northeast. We'll expect to see this point outside San Javier. This again. Uh, Terrain-wise, should be fairly recognizable, so we'll just do this all through dead reckoning. We can use this San Javier VOR to cross-check our position if we feel we need to, but I think that ought to be pretty recognizable. So as soon as we f we cross over this point, which again looks like it's going to be happening almost exactly one hour into the flight, 9:22 Eastern Time now, so about three more minutes. Looks like that'll be pretty much dead on, and then we'll head up to the north and east uh, towards San Javier. Once we do that, once I get the plane turned, I think it'll be time for me to take a quick break out of the cockpit, trip to the little pilot's room, grab a second Red Bull, and uh, be back with you momentarily. And by the way, guys, so um, as far as uh, as furry co-pilot announcing some of your all's entrances, I've only just begun with that, so if Furry Copilot is not yet announcing your entrance, please don't take uh, offense to that. We're going to be that's a, that's a feature I just started messing with today. So we're going we're gonna to be expanding that uh, rampantly over the next few streams. But yeah, some fun stuff. Titanium Druid is here. Some fun stuff that we've, we're, we're training the furry co-pilot to do. It would not hurt, by the way, to take another quick spin. Well, I'll tell you what. First thing to do, let's just verify that our headings are all synced up. So magnetically, we're on a 075. So we've drifted about 5 degrees off here. Let's fix this one first. So this one's actually only about a degree off. There's a 075. 
Let's pop that down five degrees. We're going to let the autopilot kind of readjust itself, decide which way it wants to point. We'll make sure that all shakes out and is all consistent among itself. While we're waiting for that to happen, it's not a bad idea to take a quick spin through the engine gauges. Temps and pressures all looking uh, pretty good. The, the cylinder head temps still running on the kind of the high side of the greens. Uh, it's still well within the green area, but I'm just gonna open those cow flaps up another percent or two there. Outside air temps just barely below freezing, so if we do encounter any moisture, we'll need to be ready to pop some anti-icing on, but uh, so far so good. Uh, oil pressure, fuel pressure are still all looking good. Manifolds still at 34. RPM still at 23, so everything's looking good there. We'll pop that back into 10x for our arrival. And uh, right before we turn northeast, our last set of engine gauges to uh, to check here would be the fuel tanks. Looks like we're wow, we're well perfectly balanced here. 90 in all four. Again, I'm, I'm making a concerted effort tonight to be better at the fuel management in this plane than I usually am. So if I go to an asymmetrical fuel configuration to rebalance tanks after we you know, sit at the what happens is we sit on the ramp and we run the number two engine while we uh, shut off the number one so we can open the doors uh, on the number one side and let you all in and out. There's no APU on this plane so keeping that number two running kind of works as the APU. The problem is you're only running one engine you can only run off of one tank so the fuel balance becomes <coughs> imbalanced. There's nothing you can do about it. One option would be to run you know, the first part of your turnaround on one main tank and the second part of your turnaround on the other main tank, but I'm not that good that I can switch those tanks. So a lot of times what I try to do is rebalance it after we get back uh, up in the air. And then as soon as I switch both engines to run off of the more full tank, I forget that I have done that, I leave it that way, and then that more full tank becomes the nearly empty tank over the course of time. So we'll see if we can do a little bit better with that tonight. Two streams ago we did it very very well as we made our arrival into Gibraltar but uh, the last stream we flew this in Southern California and uh, did exactly what I said. I set it up uh, asymmetrically to fix a balance problem and I wound up making the balance problem way worse. So we're now dead centered on uh, 080. Let's make sure all of our gauges now, now agree. They do. So we are ready to make that turn. You know again I'm going to kind of Kind of, I want to swing it out just a little bit off the coast here um, and then turn to about a 051. If we turn a little early, maybe we can turn to a 052, 053. And then again, 88 miles should be just about a half an hour, a little bit more than a half an hour uh, up to this next point here just off of San Javier. Making our way up to the first of three Mediterranean islands we'll be visiting tonight. There's Ibiza right there, and then we will continue on a short 30-minute hop from Ibiza to Mallorca, and then another short 30-minute hop over here to Menorca. So it's going to be a bit of a long stream tonight with the three hops, uh, but the hops number two and three are going to be much more kind of quick up and downs than, uh, than this first one. So get all of our housekeeping stuff, all of our stream news and such out of the way. Furry co-pilot there announcing the uh, channel raffle as I was describing it earlier. Titanium Druid says the tanks are perfectly balanced as all things should be. Well, much agreed. I love it when life is in perfect balance. Happens so rarely, not only in this aircraft, but in my life. <laughs> Them's my shoes brings up a good point. Yeah, we do a longer stream. You guys rack up some more of those alphabet points. It gives you some more chances to redeem entries into that monthly raffle. Again, we we do that drawing at the very end of the month or the beginning of the next month. So you've still got uh, about two weeks. What is today? Today's the 16th, so you got just under two weeks. Uh, I guess you got a week and a half yet to build up this point. So if you want to shoot for 5,000, you get six entries at the price of five. You've got some, uh, some time to save up. If you want to just redeem, hey, I'm gonna redeem maybe one just to make sure you have an entry in, that's a way to go. Really, however you want to strategize it is fine. We're going to go ahead and turn to that 05, maybe 052. However you want to strategize it is fine to make sure that you have at least one entry or 
maximize your entries this month, or if you want to kind of spread them out over the next couple of months, however you want to do it is fine. Again, a $25 gift card up for grabs to either the xplane.org store or the Amazon.com. Or uh, one of many wonderfully cheesy items from the Slant Alpha Prize Vault, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, mouse pads, coffee mugs, and uh, ball caps. Al says, for fans of the DC-3 and Microsoft Flights, and there's an upcoming DC-3 in the works from Aeroplane Heaven, uh, they make them for P3D also. Yes, we uh, we did look at that, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pull up that link out, and we'll talk more about that after we get back into the cockpit. I'm going to take a quick break right now and uh, grab a drink, on uh, refill on the drink. I'll make some, uh, do a little liquid recycling. And then we'll uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we when we we looked at that a few streams ago as well, Al. But it's worth uh, worth a second look as we're anxiously awaiting a nice DC three uh, for Microsoft Flights in 2020. And visually speaking, this is indeed a very nice DC three. So we'll show you that just on the flip side of this little break out of the cockpit, guys. Enjoy the beautiful Mediterranean coastline as we continue our way up to the island of Ibiza. Lots of flying left to do. Sit tight.
gigawatts. 1.21 gigawatts. Alrighty, we're back. Desert Fox back with us. Desert Fox, how you been? Been just a little bit since we've seen you. Get this as even as possible. Uh, well, it looks like one one furry co pilot gets slightly more treat than the other. It's as good as we're gonna get tonight. You want the which which one of you is the better of the two? Alright. <laughs> there you go, guys. Oh, there you go. Well, now it's even. <laughs> Dave MSP back checking out the uh, sound bites. Hope you're taking careful notes, Dave. Desert Fox checking back in. Welcome back, guys. If you are just checking us out tonight, we're flying our AeroWorks C47 Skytrain and X Plane 11, which on this channel, you know, we mostly mostly fly as though it is a civilian DC-3 with the beautiful custom livery done by our friend Northwest Orient. The Slant Alpha Adventures Airways. Monogram of my grandfather right there under the cockpit window. He did not fly these uh, planes for real. He flew uh, Corsairs, Hellcats, and Wildcats in World War II, stationed in the Atlantic on the USS Bogue. Um, so he did not fly this type of plane, but he definitely flew in this type of plane's era. And uh, so we got his, his monogram up there under the cockpit window and, uh, in honor of one of my earliest aviation in, uh, inspirations. Um, we are in the Mediterranean. We are flying from Gibraltar, where we took off earlier this evening. And we're flying north and east. We flew, fly, kind of, flew kind of due east to this point out here, right outside Almera, Spain. España. And we are heading up to the north and east, to this point just off of uh, San Javier. We, we made this mark here at about 9.25 Eastern Time. So we expect at 88 miles, we expect this mark to be at about 9.55 Eastern Time. Hell, no, I don't have anything more for you. Get down. I love you, buddy. I'm sorry that you're still hungry. Um, all I have is I don't have anything. Now, my, my wife and I always joke, we have to do this you know, the blackjack dealer move where we show both sides of our hands to the camera to prove that we don't have any uh, any trickery going on. Um, that's the only way to convince them that there's no more treats. Um, anyway, so, expect, well, I'll tell you what, 88 out of 180 is not, it's a little bit more than a half an hour, is it not? 88 divided by 180 No, no, it's actually darn close. It's almost exactly a half an hour, okay? Because if we multiply that by 60, it's 29.3 minutes. Uh, of course, 180 is, a, is an estimation of our ground speed. It's not exactly that, but it does say that we are... You know, it does say that we're going to get to this point at uh, 9.55, more or less, and... You know, we may we may be a few minutes ahead, a few minutes behind. It does look like the coastline does indeed kind of curve back out toward us up ahead. So I think everything is proceeding as we have foreseen it, as we like to say. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. The uh, so Desert Fox says it can't wait for the Corsair in DCS. That'll definitely get me into the World War II scene there. Yeah, DCS looks like a really neat platform. It's just uh, not the style of flying that I prefer to do. We were talking last stream about uh, you know my dad's my dad's for uh, my, my my dad's uh, aviation interest. I saw the word foretold on your message there, Antwerp, and I almost crossed the two thoughts in my brain there. Uh, Inchworm 426, as it was foretold in the prophecy, right, exactly. The prophecy being, yeah, we'll fly about a half an hour on about this heading and we'll end up at about this point. That was the, that was the prophecy. We'll see how, how well that prophecy comes true. 
the vaguer you make it, the more true it becomes. <laughs> But we were talking the Vader, the Vader you make it. No. Yes and no. Um, we were talking prior to me stepping away, just like T V weatherman inchworm says. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the better analogy there. Um, we were talking before I stepped away about the link that Al South MIA had posted. And we looked at this at a pre on a previous stream as well. Um, but uh, Aeroplane Heaven has a DC three out for P3D, and uh, they are in the works of creating one for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Boy, there's just ads all over the place here. Um, this is uh, MSFS add-ons with the preview. I think we were looking at a different site uh, that had a preview posted. Probably like these very same pictures, though. Um, I think it was FS Elite. Uh, so we scrolled through. I think FS Elite was the one that had the previews that included some of the cockpit shots. So I didn't see... I mean, the, the exterior views look great, but, you know, for me, what makes or breaks it... Is it here? Yeah, what makes or breaks it for me is, is the interior. So I'm looking for... Yeah, I might have to find that FS Elite article because I don't see any of the interior shots. The the, the funny thing about it is um, there's you know there's some other DC3s available for various flight sim platforms, and you know for me like the V Skylabs one, the interior of the cockpit shots of the V Skylabs one just looks so much like the default DC3 for X plane and for FSX really just don't impress me at all. The plane flies nice, uh, but this doesn't look as, as photorealistic and immersive as this cockpit here, which is a freeware product, originally put out by the group Digital Dakota Works. You might be familiar with Manfred John. Um, the, the group is actually more properly called Digital Dakota Works. It's Manfred John, Jan Visser, uh, Charles Dutch Owens, and a handful of others who um, whose names always tend to escape me, but all of them are part of that group. And they made this, this model this physical model, they did a version of it for FSX and P3D. Uh, this AeroWorks team, who is now comprised chiefly of uh, Johan von Wick, um, some of his collaborators are no longer with the project, but uh, the AeroWorks team, and now specifically just Johan, have ported this over to X-Plane, and it's, it's the same physical model, but then they had to write the coding from scratch to work for to work with X-Plane. So it's, it is indeed the same photorealistic cockpit that the Digital Dakota Works version uses, but uh, the scripting and stuff that goes behind the scenes and makes it all work right is, of course, all different. The Aeroplane Heaven one that uh, that was previewed looks almost like it's this model ported over again. It's it's very much uh, modeled after a extremely similar looking cockpit. However, there are a few key differences, and you can you can kind of look at some subtle. Uh, the dimensions are not quite the same. I think the windscreen, especially the dimensions, um, in this plane are a little bit off. Um, and they've, they've talked about it in the xplane.org forums about the dimensions, the interior cockpit dimensions of this plane being a little bit off. Um, the aeroplane heaven one looks slightly narrower, but probably correctly so, as, as like I said, as the discussion in uh, this model's um, discussion may, may bear out. But it looks as far as like the, the instrumentation layout looks almost identical to this plane. Uh, the, 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 the pattern of, uh, the, you know, the, the, the stitching on the side, the, 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 um, I don't know what you call that, the, uh, the, the interior surface of the fuselage has the same kind of green diamond pattern with the stitching there. Um, the instrumentation layout is very, very similar, almost identical. You can see, though, if you look at this, like some of the wear spots, and it does have this bungee, um, bungee-mounted uh, compass, this, you know, this vibration-dampening uh, bungee-mounted compass is, is very similar as well. But you can see, like, if you look at the wear spots, you'll notice that it's not the same. It's, it's, it is a different model. 
again, the dimensions are a little bit different. The gauge faces are a little bit different. It's it's different enough that you can see that it's not just a port over with some tweaks. It's actually its own. Uh, that's the link with the inside views for from, from FS Elite. Thank you, Al. That's what I was about to uh, go hunting for. But again, we'll do a couple of comparisons. Um, the uh, prop thrust and uh, mix levers are, are a little bit different looking. We'll show you in just a moment. Um, and then the seats. So I think that the, yeah, the seats in the Airplane Heaven one are a uh, kind of a, a black cloth uh, seat pad, bottom butt pad. Uh, but then the back is just a curved molded plastic, whereas, you know, this, this version has the leather, uh, the leather seats, the beautifully worn um, leather seats, you know, on the, on the seat bottom and the seat back, whereas the Aeroplane Heaven one's a little bit different, um, you know, seat hey, style. We got a six month anniversary from Papa Charlie on that uh, tier one subscription. Thank you so much for the continued support of the channel, Papa Charlie. Um, those subscriptions and the donations and the cheer bits guys that you send, those are all what make this prize vault possible. And, uh, you know, as much as, as much as I do appreciate the, the financial support that you guys provide to the stream, um, I don't do this for the purpose of an income. I do this kind of, like I said in the, in the previous stream, I do this really for my own entertainment. The fact that it entertains you guys as well is just, uh, you know, kind of icing on the cake. So all of the financial support that you guys put in kind of comes back to you guys in the form of these uh, these kind of special things and the raffles and the giveaways and the landing competitions with the prizes and such. So I try to give uh, your generous support to me right back to you guys. So thank you for, for Papa Charlie and, uh, and for those of you others that are subscribed to the channel. We certainly appreciate it. Let's look at that... Uh, FS Elite article. This is the one. No, I don't want. I don't want uh, email from you guys either. Uh, this is the one I was looking at before. So thank you for that link, Al, for hunting that down. Yeah. So this is the. Uh, I'll come back up to the top there if they're not repeated. Yeah. Okay. That's where they are. This is the one I was looking at, and it seems like it's very, very close to being finished. Visually, obviously, it looks very, very good. Let's um, kind of make that a bit bigger for you guys here. And uh, oh, I kind of want to keep half an eye on the... Uh, yeah, so it looks like we're coming up, coming up to this point right outside San Javier. So we'll, we'll kind of check that out uh, right, right when we intended to be. Or just about 9.55 is what I said. Uh, so that's over the left shoulder. So obviously that's a little bit different. And again, the wear spots are a little bit different. Now this is looking like a gray, uh, a gray stitching pattern. I had thought I had seen in previous shots that the stitching pattern was green, so this might be a different one. Yeah, I don't remember seeing one, Al, with the uh, with the GPS in it. Of course, that may be an option. This is a different one, Al. This one's, I mean, this one's nice, but it's a little sparser. Is this, this might be the, uh, this might be the P3D version, I think. Yeah, we'll have to come back to that. Let's come back to that. I think that's the P3D version now. I'll have to... Have to check. Okay, let's um, let's just do a, a little bit of cross-checking on our position here. And then I'll come back to that. Because that, that does not look... What do I know? Don't trust my judgment, says I. Yeah, that doesn't look like the one I was talking about. The one that I was talking about looked much more close... I mean, you had to look really closely to see that it was not this model. Um, so we got that point there, and then the airport is ahead, and we got a little bit of a, a lake or, you know, peninsula, um, and then the airport's ahead of that. Okay, so we can see that little that little um, connection there that, that creates that lake, and then the airport should kind of be nestled in. Looks like it might be in... Uh, looks like it might be that flat area there. It might be just a little bit too far out to see it. The downwind sim binoculars not serving us too well. Of course, I'm also not 100% convinced whether I did uh, ortho scenery in this region since we were going to be kind of flying past it and not right up the coast initially. Or is this the airport down here? Not sure, but we definitely can see that that thin little strip of land 
that kind of makes that area of coastline into us into a lake of sorts and that's definitely what we're seeing so th th we are where we think we are for sure uh, just don't know 100% where exactly the airport is based on where I'm looking is it this should be oh, okay there we are there's the airport for sure there's the airport for sure okay good and our navigation plan really calls for us to maintain the same 051 heading so not too much we need to do except for kind of take note of the time as we pass that tip there which I had said 955 looks like we're going to be real close to that in fact um, and then we'll do the math and we'll see like how much further we think it will be until our destination 124 miles but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the math in terms of time here in just a moment uh, let's go ahead and take a since we're talking headings let's go ahead and take a moment to double check so this says magnetically we're at a 058 maybe I'm sorry 048 right And that is uh, in concert with it. This one's drifted a few degrees ahead, so we'll knock that back to there. We'll let the airplane shake that difference out. While that's happening, we'll go ahead and take a spin through the rest of the engine gauges. Uh, cylinder head temps are looking good in that green range. Doesn't look like, eh, well, we could we could bump it down just a little bit, but it's in the green. We know, of course, there's no failures associated with that anyway, so I think we're good there. Um, outside air temp again, we know it's slightly below freezing. If we hit any moisture, we'll need to keep note of that. Temps and pressures all looking in the green. Uh, oil temps, cylinder head, yeah, oil temps, cylinder head temps we already looked at. Um, we'll just take another spin through the left and right main. We know we're right at 90. Left and right aux we hope are still balanced there. Yeah, right about 70 gallons. So we will leave those be. Okay, good. Um, let's take one more peek now. Make sure that the um, heading has shaken out so the gauges are now, all now in, in agreement that we're on a 051 to a 052. Yeah, that one says more like maybe a 053, so we'll bump that back one. And that says, yeah, about a 052. Okay, so we're good there. Is parallax a thing checking the magnetic compass? Asks Titanium Drew. I don't know. Let's, let's find out. From this thing, from this angle, it is uh, it is the 052. Let's, uh, let's scooch over. Still kind of looks like a 052. Still kind of looks like a 052. So I would say not in this one. So I would say the plane of the needle and the plane of the um, of the indications that the, the, the uh, what, what you call that the the tick marks the the, the demarcations are are very very close. So from whatever angle, you're still going to see kind of the same reading. Whether that's the case in the real compass, I don't know, but at least we we have that uh, we have that assurance for now, at least that. It's, there's, there's not uh, a difference depending on the angle check. Yeah, no, no, important question, uh, Titanium. I thank you for asking that. I've, never, I, I've always thought about that, and I've never really done the experiment. So that's the nice thing about some of these longer hops. We get, uh, we get some time to screw around with stuff like that and answer our questions. All right, so it looks like 53. Yeah, it looks like 955 is going to work out almost perfectly. Right as soon as we get over that tip uh, of that. Uh, of that peninsula there. We'll go ahead and mark off uh, the time. Uh, so let's close up that link. Here's So here's the one that Al now says, FS Elite, airplane having DC-3 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, this is the one. This has got to be the one. And here, yeah, here indeed are the interior shots. All right, so here's... All right, so here's here's a good comparison. You guys can see. Let's let's see if I can match the. Let's pull the yokes up. Match the angle as best as I can. A 
lighting is not matching. Obviously, the, the, the cockpit that we're looking at is a little bit well, a little bit better lit. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see it's and it is that kind of greenish, but it's a little bit a little bit brownish green padding with the stitching. Um, and you can see now in the, in the aero, aeroplane heaven one, you can see that that is a pad that is kind of strapped to the outside. The outside looks like a bare green metal, and then the pad is kind of uh, attached to that. So that's a little bit better represented here, whereas in here it looks like that padding is kind of you know, bolted to the side of the plane, um, much more flush, much more you know, all the way around. So uh, we can see that this box here is a little very different than what uh, is depicted here to the left, this, this silver box might be the intercom I'm not sure what that is um, and you can see again the throttle prop and mix levers are a little different let's kind of go back to that initial view throttle prop and mix levers are a little different in the uh, airplane heaven so again it's it's photo realistically looks to be almost the same cockpit layout uh, but some slight differences in the in the shape of the handles and certainly the seat you like I said the seats a black um, black cloth pad and there's just another view of the seat that's uh, here's here's a side view okay side view of the of the first officer seat you can see that it's not it's got molded plastic back rather than having that tall that tall padded back it's a shorter molded plastic back let's turn it let's see if we can duplicate the angle as best we can here Yeah, not bad, not bad a match. Uh, so the airplane heaven again, it's it's very similar. But certainly it, it is a different model, not the same model ported over. Wear spots are different on the uh, on the handles. Shape of the uh, shape of the windscreen slightly different. They both look good. Yeah, no, they, I'm not. I'm not saying one's any better than the other, but I'm just saying the, my my purpose in, in pointing out this detail is just to say that it is it is in fact its own model. It is not a port over of this model that we're looking at. See that the the aeroplane heaven one looks uh, looks like it might be a little narrower, and that's why I say you know the the cockpit dimensions on this plane of this version of it are not. 100% accurate, we think, you know, based on this discussion in the xplane.org forum, you know, we do think that this cockpit doesn't quite fit the exterior model like it should. So the one we're looking at here, Airplane Heaven, just might be scaled out just a little bit more accurately. And again, you can see that bungee-mounted, um, bungee-mounted wet compass. But again, it's not exactly the same. It's just, uh, it, it is its own model, just very very similar. It must have been a very similar um, C-47 or DC-3 that was the basis of the modeling. But uh, you can see that it's just slightly different in, 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 a, in a few subtle ways to know so that you know that it's its own model. Not just a port over of this model. So let's update the view here. We got the, the what do we got? We got the follow button from Bill, Bill by C. Bill by C is with us. Love to see how Airplane Heavens one will perform on Microsoft Flights in 2020. Indeed, yeah, that'll be the proof in the pudding there, Al. How's it fly? So yeah, again, the slightly different layout of the overhead buttons. Uh, battery switch on the Airplane Heaven one is over here on the left. Battery on, you can see it's on the far left of that screen. Uh, fewer switches over the first officer side than what's in this plane. So slightly different overhead panel layout. But indeed, very similar overall. Aeroworks team did a kick-ass with the model. Yeah, so the Aer Aeroworks team actually did not do the visuals. The visuals were all ported over from that the, the Manfred John, Jan Visser, um, and uh, Dutch Owens team that did this initial one for uh, Flight Sim X. So I think this is back to the first one we were looking at. Yeah, okay, good. So, yeah, like I said, you can see it is modeled after a very similar, if not the same, 
um, physical DC-3. Probably not the same, probably though a very similar one off the line. Similarly equipped for sure. Now the big question for me would be, like in the AeroWorks version, we have this kind of, uh, we have a more modern autopilot that does indeed track uh, VORs, VOR radials and can do, you know, an ILS approach uh, with automation. I don't think, <laughs> who knows whether we'll have that in, I don't see it uh, here, but who knows whether we will have that in the AeroWorks, uh, in the uh, Aeroplane Heaven one. So it might be a little bit tougher if, we, if this is a more faithfully ren rendered Sperry autopilot that would only have uh, pitch hold and heading hold, really. Might be a little bit more of a challenge to fly this one on VATSIM. I'm also not sure that I'm seeing, now that we think of that, now that we've mentioned that, not sure that I'm seeing, whoops, not sure that I'm seeing any VOR gauges. Um, all right, I'm struggling. I'm not able to uh, zoom that picture in. Not sure that I'm seeing any VOR gauges. So if this is a little bit more faithfully rendered one to the period. Uh, we might not have uh, we might not have the ability to fly uh, you know, VOR airways on this one. We'll have to see. We'll have to see in more detail. But thank you, Al, for finding those links and letting us do that visual comparison again. Very, very similarly equipped DC three. Bill by C hitting us with some love from the looks like the Bill Ferrelli channel. Appreciate that, Bill by C. Yeah, let's uh, let's resend the link. This was the uh, this was the link from the FS Elite site reviewing that. Uh, oh, there you go. I'll I'll got it in there for you. I was just about to, to copy and paste the same thing in there. Al, thank you so much for that. Um, Yeah, and he says, uh, Al says, quite a few upcoming aircrafts to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Yes, indeed. Well, I mean, we knew that it was going to take some time after the release of the platform for the, you know, the major developers to get their products put together, fine-tuned, and, and, and published. So we know that there's going to be kind of a feeding frenzy as all of the initial projects for Flight Sim 2020 start coming to market this year. I think PMDG is still talking about having a release. Uh, well, I think are the PMDG are they the ones that said that theirs probably wouldn't be until 2022 at this point? I can't remember what their latest word was. Eagerly awaiting just flight getting a 152 ready for uh, for Musfus says Titanium Druid. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. I actually like the JP Logistics modded 152. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the latest update to that is putting some putting a DME box in there. They have kind of a cheap one now. They're going to be adding a, a de facto uh, DME box to that cockpit is their next project. So that kind of makes it a little bit more easily flyable on VATSIM. Right now it's a slant uniform. You have VOR guidance, but you don't have distance. Uh, but now they've got that added to the, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mod of the, if the, of the default 152. Of course, we, we would assume that Just Flight would add in things like uh, you know, like your pre-flight walk around and and uh, fluid checks and, and that sort of thing. Fly-by-wire is not working with the new update, says Bill by C. Yeah, I did not check. Um, I did not check the CJ4. I haven't been on the working title Discord to see if the CJ4 is still uh, still up and running or if that got hit by the update today. We did. Uh, we did, by the way, have that that. Um, that major patch to Microsoft Flight Sim today, which also included World Update for UK. So about a, I think it was about a, what was that, about a 36 gig update, and then uh, another another four or five gig for the uh, for the UK um, scenery update. You do have to trigger that the the, the World Update um, separately, by the way. The World Update, you go into the Content Manager and do that, but. Uh, the main patch will update on its own. So fly Flybywire says it's broken again after the new update. It reverts to the original. Yeah, so uh, and Al says they'll probably fix it within the next 24 hours. The same thing happened the last time, yeah. 
Yeah, Working Title Group, uh, which was the group that's doing that CJ4 mod, they were pretty quick after the last one as well. But I haven't been over on their Discord to see whether that uh, whether that CJ4 needs any tweaking after this last update or, or not. So that obviously that big patch just came out today. Um, I'm sure, though, that if we head over to their Discord, there's been some discussion about the potential impact of that patch. This Friday, I think we are slated to fly the FlyJSM 727, so it'll be another one in X plane. I gotta pull my sky. You'd think I would know my own schedule. I don't off the top of my head, but I think the next one coming up, we had said if Friday the 19th. Yeah, so we'll be back into X plane with the FlyJSM 727 on this coming Friday. So we'll have another. I think. Okay, the next Friday we're flying with the Virtual USA Flying Club. We're in that JP Logistics 152. We're in the Mooney Ovation on Monday. So we'll yeah. So so starting a week from yesterday, six days from tonight, we'll be back in flights in 2020 here on stream for you. So hopefully, um, Carinado Mooney Ovation. If that needs any updates, hopefully that will get sorted out between now and next Monday, and then. Uh, week from Friday, Friday the 26th, we'll be in that JP Logistics 152. So hopefully those mods will get sorted out before those streams come up and everything will be a hunky-dory. Bill by C, hit the subscribe button as well. Bill, thank you so much for that. We were talking earlier. We do a monthly drawing on this channel, a $25 gift card and or Slant Alpha merchandise up for grabs. And, and all of this comes out of what, uh, what you guys do to support the channel financially, the subscriptions. The, uh, the cheer bits and the donations that you guys make to the stream. So um, so all of these prizes, you can choose any one if you happen to be the uh, the, the raffle winner every month. We do a, a drawing at the end of the month. And Bill, if you hang out long enough, you start accumulating those channel points there at the bottom of the chat panel, lower left-hand side of the screen. You get up to 1,000 of those. You can cash those 1,000 in for an entry into that drawing. And if you get up to 5,000 by the end of the month, you can cash those 5,000 points in for six entries into that drawing. So you get six for the price of five if you save up and hit that 5,000 mark. If not, a little more attainable for somebody who has just joined the stream here about a week and a half prior to our next drawing. We do it at the end of each month. So the next one will be coming up at the end of next week. Probably on that stream we were just talking about with the uh, Virtual USA Flying Club on the 26th. I think probably at the end of that stream we'll go ahead and pull our February... Uh, 25, yeah, our February uh, gift card winner. Bill Bicey says, I like your voice, Lynn Alpha. Have you done radio? I am gu guilty as charged, Bill. Bill guilty as charged. Uh, a lifetime ago. A lifetime ago, my friend. Oh, uh, Bill, so that the, the full show schedule is down uh, underneath the picture window there. There's the About tab, and the full show schedule is down there. Uh, underneath that about tab, all kinds of cool information on the, on the channel. So if you want to check that out there. And 747 Blake has hit the follow button as well. Yeah, so Bill, I worked in uh, worked in radio here in the Washington, D.C. market. Kind of, uh, they kind of hid me on the overnights and, and on holidays when nobody else wanted to work. And I was, I was an eager kid. And I, I gave, uh, I, was, I was ambitious. I took any slot that nobody else wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Bill says, uh, I have the perfect voice for radio, people say. Uh, people say, I have the perfect face for radio. Them's My Shoes says, uh... Oh, hold on, hold on. Them's My Shoes says, don't need to change your schedule. Have people for that at this point shortly. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I've got a whole team of people. Uh, they're mostly furry and four-legged, but they're very, very efficient. Um, 747 Blake said, I just came across your stream. Nice to see somebody flying the old school. Uh, I like flying the uh, Connie, the A2A Qantas Connie. Yeah, we're in the Douglas DC-3 tonight, uh, Blake, and we appreciate you hanging out with us while we do it. Uh, we are in the Mediterranean, I guess, at this point. Um, oh, Bill says that's what I meant to say. <laughs> you blew your own joke. Well, I fixed it for you, man. That's what I do. It's all good. <laughs> um, we probably at some point have to figure out like how close are we getting to our destination here. We're kind of 
off into the uh, the great blue uncharted area here. We pass this point at 9:55 Eastern time, so 15 minutes ago. We're going 124 miles. We're we're going to be basically doing 180 miles an, uh, an hour. That means we're flying for 0.68 hours. If we multiply that by 60, it tells us we're going to be flying for 41 minutes. And if we subtract 5, because we started that last point 5 minutes before the hour, it appears that we will be arriving at or near our destination uh, 36 after the hour. So, 26 minutes from now, since we're 10 after the hour already. So we've got a little time yet. But, uh, wouldn't be a bad thing. Let's start doing some descent planning now. Um, just as a sanity check, and just to make sure we don't have any uh, any navigation snafus that would throw our plan off, let's go ahead and tune in this Ibiza NDB on frequency 394. Come down here. Whoops. Yeah, there we go. 394. Oh, we're one off from that right now. So 393, whoops, 394, there we go. Uh, do we see, and so there's nothing in on that just yet. Don't know what the um, transmitting range of that NDB might be, but we think, you know, again, if this was 124 miles and we, 15 minutes ago, we we're doing 180 miles an hour, three miles a minute, so we're 45 miles. So we're probably about 75, 80 miles. And you guys at the top of the screen have that progress bar. Don't help me out, please. I, I'm, I'm just kind of, I like to do my own math and, and not cross-check with uh, tools that I would not have in the cockpit. Uh, so please do not tell me whether I'm right or wrong. But I, su I suggest we are probably somewhere around, like I said, we're 45 miles, 120, so 100, probably around 75 to 80 miles out from our destination. Um, just based on, you know, tr tracking about three miles a minute. <laughs> Al says, they're having some electrical problems with that NDB. Electrical crews are on site. Expect service restored in the next eight hours. Well, that'll be helpful, Al, since we're planning on arriving there in, uh, what, about 20 minutes. So <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do without it. I, I, I expect it'll pop in any second now, but we'll be able to do without it. We're, we've, our dead reckoning has been pretty... Uh, pretty solid this evening. We can always, if we have to, if we really have to, we can pull a uh, position check off of this um, off of this VOR up here. This uh, Alicante or Al, uh, Altet, I suppose. Um, but this, this VOR, if we needed to, we could see what distance we were and radio we were from that, and we could use that to cross-check our position uh, as we... And, and you know what? Why not? Let's Let's show how we could do that. Let's show how we can do that. But you know, and again, my 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 supposition. So we're I'm going to say we're probably now about 60 miles out uh, from this last point that we plotted. Let's just see how close we are to that. This is on frequency 118.15. Eight, 18? How could it be 118? Oh, that's, I'm sorry, that's the tower frequency of the airport. 113.8, duh. Yeah, uh, duh, I'm an idiot. Sorry, guys, hold on one second. This is the frequency I should be looking at. This is the tower frequency. <laughs> Even says right there, tower. <laughs> that is not what we're trying to tune right now. Uh, 113.8 is what we're trying to tune. So as soon as I started spinning that up, I'm like, 118, that's... That's a comp frequency. 113.8. Okay, so we see we do have uh, a signal on that. We got 37 miles distance, and we are on. Well, we can use this. This is actually the easy way. We're on a 0, 9, 5, it looks like. 0, 9, 6, perhaps. 096 and 38 miles. Get around to the nearest mile. So 096 and 38. So here's how we plot that in here. 
It is the ALT 0960, three digits for the radial, and then three digits for the uh, distance. So we say 38. And I had said we were about 60 miles out. Hey, look at that. So there you go. 38 was correct, yeah. Okay, so because now we're almost 39. So we're not tracking outbound on that 095. So the, the radial we are on is actually changing. As a matter of fact, if we were to uh, center this on a 095, we would see that it would be drifting. We're, we're slowly going to a lower bearing. So the more we let that sit there, the more drift to the uh, to the right, saying we should correct to the left to remain on that 095. Well, we're not going to do that, though. We're going to continue tracking toward our destination. But our bearing to that station as we pass it will change gradually. But at any given moment, we can see what radial we're on and what distance we're on, and then we can plot that radial and distance. Well, on a paper chart, you, you know, you kind of use your little protractor, your little straight edge, and kind of draw it out from there and measure out the correct scale to figure out where you are. But Sky Vector does it a lot of that work for you if you just tune, if you just type in the identifier and then again three digits for the radial and then again three digits for the distance. You can only go whole miles. You can't do, you know, 38.7 or whatever, but just round it to the nearest whole mile. And that'll be close enough as far as figuring out what heading to me. So and again, we're 052 and, and 67 miles to our destination. So that should line up pretty well with that progress bar that you guys can see at the top of the screen that I cannot. Again, please do not confirm for me. Destination is uh, Ibiza, Ibiza Island. And OBFG is with us. OBFG, good to see you. Let's uh, go ahead and pull a METAR observation for Ibiza, L-E-I-B. Again, that information is in the upper right of your uh, picture window there. Oops, that's not what I wanted to pull over. We wanted to uh, we wanted to do this on, on that sim. Again, no nearby controllers, probably very little nearby traffic. METAR LEIB. 270 at 5, so if we've got and variable wind direction, 230 to 300. Uh, but 270 being kind of the median, 5 knots, so it's not really much to worry about. Point is, though, that we do want a westbound runway if we've got one. And remember again that the. Uh, broken at 900 so we're and, and again we because we want to do this as a VFR flight seeing sightseeing tour we're not actually simulating these conditions but just in case there's any other traffic there we do want to use a westbound runway just to to be consistent with anybody else that's coming in and out um, but we're not simulating that broken zero no zero nine we're simulating this as a VFR flight so cheating the weather a little bit tonight Shh, don't tell anybody uh, but let's go ahead, oh, LEIB, let's go ahead and pull this off of Navigraph. And see what we've got runway-wise. Again, we're not doing any kind of instrument approaches. We're doing this all in terms of, so we've got a 6 and a 2-4. So I guess we want 2-4 for our arrival. Then let's pull up the taxi charts. Uh, airport and airport info. Uh, so it looks like we're going to land on 2-4. looks like it's going to be a right-hand turnoff to uh, to the GA area on the northeast side. So we're going to turn off. Uh, I would expect we'll make this first, hopefully make, this first high-speed turnoff echo and then back on Bravo to the northeast and then into the GA apron kind of, uh, well, it looks like we might need to cut in over here on Alpha and then up to the GA apron. So... Uh, but certainly a right-hand turnoff for sure if we're going to make a you know, kind of a left traffic pattern to runway 24. Field elevation is uh, listed somewhere up here, I presume. I don't know the Jepson charts as well as I know the U.S. like the NACO charts. So I'm, I'm struggling to find some of this information on this chart that Probably readily, oh well, field elevation 19 at that point there. Don't know what the average field elevation is for the for the 
airfield. I'm sure it's one here somewhere, and I'm not seeing it. Probably down toward the bottom. But anyway, field elevation, 17 feet at this touchdown point, 19 feet at this point. So, yeah, that's good. That's close. That's basically sea level. So it means by the time we get to the airport, we'll want to be, you know, more or less at a thousand feet at our pattern altitude. Runway heading uh, 062 and a 242. And again, just kind of doing a visual pattern to a uh, 24. So we'll, we'll fly a left down, and we'll stay slightly to the right of the airport, coming in from the south and west. You know, coming in from this direction, we'll kind of stay to the right of the airport. And then a left traffic pattern means we make left turns to our base and left turn to our final and then in on runway 24. Oh, Qualip wants us to crack open the uh, the beverages for the party time in Ibiza. And Qualip, uh, you're not a channel subscriber, at least if you, if you were, you're not at the current time. So that's why that sound effect didn't work for you. But we'll do that. We'll do that for you. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so still no action on that NDB on frequency 394, but we can continue to uh, plot our approximate distance. We're now on, if we were to center this, again, remember I said the bearing to that station is going to change as we continue to not track directly to or directly away from that VOR, but it looks like we're now on a 078 and 53. 07853. So let's plot another point. Out 078053. Alright, we're tracking pretty well in toward it. It looks like we need to make a little bit of a right turn. We're tracking a little bit farther north than we intend to, so we need to make maybe make a 060 so that we end up on that right downwind. Probably not a bad idea to take a spin through the engine gauges and well take a spin to the headings first of all. Yeah, so part of the reason we're not, uh, we're tracking a little bit farther north is because we've let these headings drift out of sync. So it looks like we're tracking magnetically a 040 exactly right now. So we'll center that in. And yeah, this is probably a few, oh my goodness, that's way off. So either that has drifted that quickly or I bumped it at some point, which is probably the more likely scenario. This Navigraph covered charts uh, does Navigraph charts cover all airports? Yes, Navig the Navigraph subscription is essentially global. However, in the U.S., I prefer to use the the NACO charts or the what were they basically the FAA charts. Just more familiar with them. It's what I've been using all my life. I don't I haven't done a lot of flying outside of the U.S. Uh, on stream or, or off stream uh, in my virtual flying career, so I'm just much more familiar with those FAA charts. But yeah, Navigraph is essentially global. Looks like we got an island coming into view there, guys. Still, still nothing on that NDB, which is we've got. We definitely have line of sight with that transmitter, so that is a very weak signal. Or it's maybe, maybe it's modeled on the wrong frequency. Maybe the, the frequency changed recently, and uh, X plane still has it on an, its old one. Not sure what's going on, why we wouldn't have that NDB when we can clearly see the island, but it doesn't matter. Like I said, we, we kind of can see where we are now. We can see from the chart that the airport is on this kind of this southern peninsula. We kind of can look for this uh, this outcropping, the second secondary island that's like right across this little, uh, you know, we, look, we can look for that and we'll know that the airport is kind of like right there. So we can really kind of overfly maybe the, the halfway point between those channels as our downwind. That might be a little far out. But that'll give us some aiming points at least. Um, yeah, it looks like... I don't quite see the airport yet, but it looks like I... Um, okay, so that's maybe that, uh, that secondary island to the right, so... I would say we're, aim we're aimed on a good downwind heading if we happen to clip kind of the edge of that uh, peninsula there, and I would expect that the airfield is somewhere on that brown patch there. 
So we'll, we'll not cheat with the binoculars too much. We'll, uh, we'll scale that back. All right. At this point, I think probably not a bad idea to think about uh, our descent. We want to be down to 1,000. We're 9,500. We want to be down to 1,000. So we've got eight and a half thousands to lose. If I want to do that three and a half miles per thousand, we need to start that descent 30 miles out from the airport. Uh, I think we might be coming up on that or if we haven't passed it already. Let's do another position reading off of our ALT VOR just to estimate current mileage remaining. And it looks like we're on a 06, I'm sorry, a 073. 073 and 63. ALT 073063. Again, 073 for the radial, 063 for the distance. Uh, 36 miles. I can't remember what I said. I think I needed 30 miles. What did I say? Goldfish brain strikes again, guys. I said we had 8.5 to lose, 3.5 per thousand, so 30 miles. So we can start our descent here any second. Titanium says, I can turn around and lost trying to find the right taxiway. If Navigraph has a moving arrow I can cheat off of, I might have to subscribe. Yeah, they do. They have what they call a Navigraph sim link. I don't use it because, again, I try to limit myself to the uh, old school tools that one would have in a, in a very slant alpha cockpit like this, so I do not use that. However, um, you might have seen that maybe on Melvin Leroy's stream. I know he does use that from time to time, but there is, yeah, there's an add-on for this called Navigraph Sim Link, S-I-M Link, uh, that provides exactly what you're talking about. So for me, I'm just going to look at this and say, if I make the first high-speed right, it's the Echo. If I make the second high-speed right, it's Echo 2. Um, so that's kind of how I will gauge which of these taxiways I'm, I'm coming off on. All right, guys, bear with me in the chat as we start our descent. Uh, what do we say? Let's go ahead and get a cockpit announcement in. Go ahead and get the seatbelt signs on. What do we say? Oh, yeah, exactly. So, so Melvin Leroy is essentially cheating. We know this. Uh, temperature is 11 Celsius. So let's go ahead and get our cabin announcement done. So we're in the, the low 50s. Uh, oh, and the last thing. So should I remain in aux tanks here? Yeah, let's switch it back up to the mains. Right main. And left main. Alright, so I think we're ready now. So ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to start our descent into Ibiza. So we ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seat belts. The weather there is currently in the low 50s Fahrenheit with uh, cloudy skies and light winds. The cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash and take care of any last minute needs. And thanks again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Uh, remember, we're not simulating those cloudy skies, guys. We're cheating the weather just a little bit. Talking about cheating. Melvin does it in his own way. I do it in mine. We're all good. <laughs> all right, shield tanks, seatbelts, radio altimeter. Okay, so we're getting, we're ready to start our descent. Let me adjust the uh, seat position here. Uh, I am gonna uh, take over the airplane, fly it for real. Been a great flight, Captain. Get us in smoothly. Yeah, Billy, we got two more hops to make after this, too. We're going to continue on to May, my, um, what, Mallorca and then Mainorca. If you're able to stick around, um, you're, you're welcome to. For right now, guys, it's my airplane. Heaven help us all. Um, so bear with me on the chat. I'm probably going to fall behind in uh, interacting with you guys. So uh, please... Be understanding that I may not be super, super attentive to uh, to your messages for the rest of this flight, at least. We're going to start pulling the, the power and uh, RPMs down, 20 and 20. is kind of our standard descent power. I try to descend maybe about 800 feet per minute, sort of thereabout. I am intentionally in a slight right bank. We're kind of aiming for the edge of that peninsula, peninsula there. We assume that the, the airport will come into sight. We still don't have anything on that NDB. I'm assuming that that NDB is indeed out of service, as Al suggested, or might just be on a outdated frequency or an updated frequency that's not reflected on this chart. So we'll see. What's the Navigraph say it's supposed to be on? 
if we go into the approaches. Is there? Uh, there's not an NDB. Oh, there is an NDB to runway 24 listed. And it does say 394 is the correct frequency. So who knows? It might pop in at some point. But for right now, we're up there we go, just as I said it. So it is ahead of us, and we're pointed in the right direction, which is comforting to know. Okay, no problem. So 20 and 20. <laughs> How is using an awesome pair of binoculars made by a dear friend cheating? Asks Dems my shoes. Uh, Downwind Sim would agree. He says that that is completely legit for us to do. <laughs> All right, as we start, so we're just in. Uh, yeah, we still got a little ways to go. But I think what we can do, guys, is we can start our descent and approach checklist. That would mean putting the tanks, I'm uh, putting the uh, mix back to auto rich. We can put the cowls back to trail. Again, hand flying, manually managing the descent, man manually steering toward the tip of this peninsula here. We think up there, we can see the airport. Airport in sight now, guys. So we'll uh, kind of steer to what we're going to do is um, if I can take a moment to draw this. Probably should make an announcement as well. I uh, kind of fly along the tip of that peninsula, then our base turn, and then our final turn to the runway there. So that's the plan. So we'll fade over to the right, kind of, we want to get out, I guess we want to get out of the way of the departing traffic if there is any. Uh, and again, I should, as I said, make some announcements on Unicom. I'm going to guesstimate and say we're about 15 miles east of the airport. I really don't know. But we'll, uh, we'll just guesstimate. Ibiza traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors, about 15 miles east of the airport, 7,500 descending. We're going to enter a left downwind runway 24 Ibiza. All right, so mix auto rich, cow's trail, tailwheel should be confirmed locked down that forward position again. In the Aeroworks DC-3, we did a little modification that made that tailwheel lock work properly, but it is reversed forward is locked, back is unlocked. I think think that that is the opposite of the actual plane. Uh, but forward for us is definitely locked, and we want to make sure that that is locked for arrival. So that's been checked. Uh, we're a little early for fuel pumps and the flight attendant announcement, so we'll hold off on those. But everything up to then has been done on the approach checklist, so we are good. Just previewing the ETA, we said uh, 338 on the ground, 343 on the blocks. We did depart about five minutes late, if I recall correctly. So if we're on the ground in five minutes and on the blocks in 10 minutes, then we've made up the time. If we're about five minutes after that, then we're still probably within the uh, estimated time that I had put forth. And we're going to try and do, again, guys, bear with me as I speed through the turnaround. We're going to try and do a five-minute at-gate turn. We will leave the number two running. We will open the doors, throw you guys off, let you run in, use the little uh, passenger's room, get back on the plane as quickly as possible. We're going to try and have the doors open and shut within five minutes. That's the plan. Back in the day, these guys, these, these DC-3s used to fly airline schedules that looked like very much like train schedules where it was a long line and a series of intermediate stops and the intermediate stops were very quick arrival and departure times were spaced by you know, like I said usually about five minutes so very much and, and the C-47 the, the troop transport version of this plane is indeed called the SkyTrain and I think all these thoughts are kind of connected um, but yeah the, the early airline schedules like if you look at the on the nights that we do the Eastern Airlines uh, vintage 
timetable hops. Those the schedules look very much like train schedules, and they do very very quick five minute turns at, at each of their stops. Now, not entirely realistic to try to do that in a modern area system and a modern uh, air traffic control system because you've got a lot more negotiation with uh, air traffic control for clearances and such that you have to do now than you did in 1939. But um, it's always fun to try to reenact those timetables and see how quickly we fall behind because the routing is much less direct and the negotiation of uh, clearance takes much longer now than it used to. Uh, 20 and 20 looks like we're maintaining pretty good. Never made that connection before with SkyTrain, says Melvin. Yeah, but uh, you look at those 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 vintage Eastern Airlines timetables, man. It doesn't it, it does remind you of uh, of a train schedule, does it not? Uh, so coming up on that left downwind. Again, well, I, th I think we can shade it. We're maybe a little wider on a downwind than we should be. We're still at 6,000 feet, too. I think we can maybe expedite the descent just a touch. Pull the power down to maybe about 15. And that will allow us to expedite that descent without picking up too much excess airspeed. But we'll go ahead and shade in a little bit closer on the downwind. We'll fly a little bit tighter pattern. ATC starting to go text, says Dragon, so much less talking with ATC these days. Well, that's true in the uh, in the clearance phase and in the en route environment, but you know, still very much uh, still very much ATC chatter in the terminal environment. And I don't know that what you're referring to speeds up the process of uh, getting clearance. I mean, it may. I guess a, a PDC is a little bit quicker than uh, than having to do a verbal clearance. But that's just the process of, of transferring the clearance to the aircraft. The process of obtaining a clearance overall really is much, still much longer now than it would have been in the 30s, is my point. Filing and negotiating that clearance, not necessarily just the act of receiving it over the radio. But yeah, no, you're absolutely correct with that statement, Dragon, and I don't know that I've seen you here before. Dragon 40th is the, is the call sign. I think we've talked to some friends, some other friends that have Dragon-related call signs, so if I'm mistaken about you not having been here before, then I apologize, but uh, I think this is the first time I've seen you. And either way, we are happy to have you aboard. They can send instructions to your aircraft that it will respond to. Yeah, well, that's much more technologically advanced than what we're flying today. Yeah, not the case in 1939. <laughs> Is indeed your first time. Okay, very good. Again, I, I bear with me, guys, especially as we... I mean, I'm not doing too bad keeping up with the chat for right now, but as we get a little closer in, and of course, we're still at 4,000 feet on our downwind here. So I do need to start thinking about expediting this descent, or I might even need to do a 360 to get some altitude off. I think we'll be okay. But we will make an announcement. It bees the traffic. Douglas 514 Delta Victor's to the left downwind, runway 24. 4,000 descending uh, VFR left pattern to runway 24 Ibiza. Yeah, I said that all out of order, but that's okay. Yeah, Dragon, we were talking about that earlier. FS Elite has some really cool uh, comparison shots, some, some preview shots of that Airplane Heaven DC-3. Looks very similar. I mean, it looks like it's modeled off of uh, very similar equipped, uh, similarly equipped DC-3 to this one looked at that earlier in the stream if you get a chance maybe to wind wind that uh, stream back sim caesar with the subscription sim what's going on my friend seven months has flown by but uh, thank you for checking back in hail caesar indeed um but yeah we were looking at that uh dry so all right hang on guys 
I'm still on a fairly wide downwind as well. I mean, for 4,000 feet, I still may need to. Uh... Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and finish up the arrival checklist here. Fuel pumps can go on. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for arrival. We're still we're still just on a very high left downwind, but I think if we if we extend it out. And we're down to 120, so the speed management's been good. And as we get on this thing, by the way, the, the parallel taxiway, so the taxiway's obviously closer to the airport than the runway, so we want the further, we want the left piece of pavement as we, as we turn around. Uh, let's get that back in front of me. So coming up on 2,000 again. Uh, so not exactly a textbook VFR pattern since we're still very, very high and kind of much further out than we would be for a, a VFR pattern. But we can go ahead and start that base as we still descend. We can go ahead and start getting some drag out. So under 120, we'll go flaps one. And then we'll let the speed decay off to 100. We'll get the flaps to in gear. That'll help us, again, manage that continued descent while we uh, while we still have um, to you know, keep airspeed under control. So if under 100 now, we can go gear, flaps two. So uh, two fours and runway heading. So three. Three would be the uh, oh three three would be the down, uh, the the base heading so I overshot that and thirteen hundred feet still descending okay so we're going to end up on a uh, decent pattern entry here we'll start spinning the props forward there's our there's our base heading start spinning the props a little faster even though we're not really adding power, we're just increasing the RPMs. We will add a little bit of power back in there now that we've reached a thousand feet. We don't want to plummet into the water. We want to make it to the runway. Okay, there we are. So we want to kind of hold off on any additional descent right now until we get turned in on our final. It beats traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's left base to final now, runway 24. It beats it. Guys, can start putting some predictions into the chat. No prize for this tonight, but uh, just some predictions to the vertical descent rate at the moment the wheels touch. No bot command is necessary, just a number. Positive or negative, you guys can uh, leave the negative sign off if you want. We'll know that you mean a descent rate, no flaps three. But uh, yeah, just some predictions into the chat if you want to play along for tonight. We do occasionally, for, if you're new to the channel, we occasionally do giveaways on this channel based on uh, those predictions. Tonight is just for funsies, though. Get ready to get our last notch of flaps in. So we're down to about 75 knots already. We want to go ahead and get that last notch of flaps in and uh, aim for 75 down final, 70 over the numbers. Right hand turn off if we land. We'll just make a left closed traffic if we go missed. Everything looking good. I think we've done everything on our. I think we've done everything on our checklist. Our props are full forward, flaps, holding on flaps four here, gears down in green, tensions are announced. Let's go ahead and get that fourth notch in. Alright, here's where the rubber meets the road, literally, guys. So aim for 75 knots on final, 70 over the numbers, and looks like we're now a little bit high. we got plenty of pavement, I'm not going to sweat being a little bit high, but certainly you want to keep it kind of roughly on descent profile here. Looks like we're drifting a little bit left of center line. Let's correct that. Okay, looks like the vertical profile's back in. Get it down to about 70. Let's see if I can get the flare timing right tonight, guys. A little low now. I think we're 
think we're good. I think we're about to come back into two whites here. Nope, maybe not. It's okay. I'm happy with the descent profile, even though the lights are not quite agreeing. A little bit slow now, too. Oh, and let there be light. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Ouch. Yeah, I dropped that power way too high, guys. 376. Boom. Everybody okay? Everybody's uh, drinks still in their cups? Yeah, that was a rough one, guys. Chopped that power way too high. <laughs> Soda flaps. Yeah, I thought it was looking really good until I uh, until I got a little too aggressive with that power. Uh, that power adjustment. Oh, well. Sorry about that. Still looking to make that first high speed. <laughs> Billy said, I called 324. What was the actual? It was higher than that. 360 something, I, I think. Yeah, I think that turned in the drinks before landing. Thank God. <laughs> we can uh, cut off the tailwheel lock. We can make this right turn off. Looks like we've we really actually used much less runway than I predicted. Well off in time for this uh, first turn off here. So yeah, Echo is indeed where we wound up. The down saved a lot of energy. Yeah, it did. That's good. That's good. These shocks are tough, man. These DC-3, the C-47s, they're made for very short field work. So they, they can take it. The question is... Uh, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I said the flare timing is going to be the big question, didn't I? Anti-collision lights can come off, landing lights off, taxi lights on, pito heat off, fuel pumps can come off, cows can go into uh, open, make the next right turn here. Actually, let's go straight into the ramp on Bravo and then we'll make the next right turn. Uh, Ibiza traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor is uh, clear 24 Bravo to the ramp. Ibiza. Just in case there's anybody around, which I highly doubt that there is. And we said from the map that the GA parking was all kind of up on the north, or the, yeah, the northeast end of the field, so that's where we'll go. Got the Moby Dave with the follow. Thank you, Moby Dave. Appreciate you being here. Everything was okay, says Al, until the guy next to me had a minor, a major spine compression. Four inches shorter now. Well, you know, if you're no longer qualified to ride that roller coaster that you wanted to ride, I apologize for that. We will uh, we'll refund your ticket price on Slant Alpha Airways, if that is the case. Them's my shoes. Guess it's pointless on the next flight to order my martini stirred and not shaken. Yeah, they're all they're all shaken at this point. Fly at your own risk, says Ori Darkwind. Ori, I didn't see you come back in, man. Appreciate you stopping back in here. All right, so GA Land is, uh, I guess, these buildings up here. I'm kind of at a loss for where the turn-in and taxi is for these ramp positions, but we'll just make it up as we go along. Why not? That's what we always do. I always enjoy your streams, even the bouncy ones. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, we do have quite a few of those in this plane. <laughs> We have a few of those in this plane. It's, it's just what we've come to expect and love. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, we'll just kind of pull a beam to this hangar here. Just gonna watch this. Uh, this is a very busy roadway to our left, so watch that as you hop off the plane. We got two more flights to make, guys. Don't go anywhere. We got. Uh, we're on the island of Ibiza here now. We're going to head up to uh, Mallorca and Menorca. 
the uh, the two cousins there. So, so uh, sit tight. Hopefully, those two landings will be better. <laughs> we'll average it out over the three, perhaps. Um, so, parking brake on, taxi light off. Uh, what else do we need to do here? That's what we call uh, old school. <laughs> um, so on the taxi end, tailwheels, flaps, lights, pito, fuel pumps, cows, yeah, we did all that. Taxi let off, parking brake on, tailwheel can go back into the locked position as we sit on the ramp. Uh, we can reset the transponder. Actually, it's still set as saying 7,000, but we can shut it off for now while we're sitting here at the ramp. Uh, we'll, we'll close up the number one engine. So mix, magnetos, and generator. And that will allow us, again, uh, back in the old day, we keep that number two spinning to keep power to the plane. There's no APU on this plane. But with that number one off, we can safely start unloading you guys here uh, as we get the seatbelt lights off as well. So head out. We're going to see. It's 10.50 now, Eastern Time. We're going to see if we can get the doors closed by 10.55 and get our next uh, next flight underway. Uh, trim can be reset. Okay, it's pretty pretty close to neutral anyway. Uh, the ETA of 3.43, and we're down at 3.50, so we're seven minutes late. We got underway five minutes late. Might be able to make up that time on like number two. Um, and then we want to check the fuel. Fuel remaining should be 229 gallons. Let's spin through and see what we've got. Uh, so we got 78, 78, so that's 140, 156. And then 66, 76, 86, 96. 100, say 198 there. And then... Uh, and 200. So we got 240. What did I say? 229. All right, cool. So yeah, um, fuel remaining is looking like really good. 1372 is what we should be. Now let's go ahead and check on the cheat page. 1372. We got so we got extra 100 pounds uh, over and above our estimate. So everything's on the on, on the timing and and uh, fuel consumption is looking pretty good as far as the numbers. Uh, we've got a tutorial on our channel, by the way, that uh, gives you a rundown of how I make those calculations and predictions. If you want to check that out, so. All right, very good. Let's uh, take it from the top, guys, and we'll head up to leg number two. Bear with me as I time to hit the rack. Says titanium, and uh, thank you very much for stopping back in. We got two more legs to fly, guys. If you are going to stick around, we've got uh, a hop from Ibiza to Ma Mallorca. Which one are we going first? Yeah, Mallorca then Menorca. So uh, yeah, so hang around. We got lots of flying left to do, guys two more legs of it yet. Let's go ahead and get the flight plan file. We're going to be VFR, we're going to be LEIB to LEPA. Uh, no alternate departure time. We're going to try and be off. Uh, we could maybe still make it uh, 0400 even. Time and route we think it's going to be 030 with 232 left in the tanks. Cruise speed 180. I think we're going to go 3500 here. VFR north eastbound is still correct. Everything else there is good. Filed. Let's update it in the progress bar as well. LEIB to LEPA. Excuse me. All right, so that progress bar is reset. We know that the uh, we we're, we're, we're cheating the weather, so we know two nine or nine or two is uh, is accurate field elevation here. Twenty four feet, pretty darn close to what we're showing on the altimeter, so that's good. Uh, no clearance to obtain, no controllers to obtain it from. We'll assume our VFR squawk is still 7,000. Put it back into alt al uh, altitude. Excuse me, altitude reporting mode. Uh, Navin ADF tuners is needed. We don't need any. We can turn the radio on server back to 1x because I use that 400 feet mark as the, as the mark to pull in flaps and reduce to uh, climb power from our takeoff power. You know, in a, in a jet airliner, you do that at 1,000 here. We'll do that at about 400. Uh, so we'll use that as our as our gauge. Of course, we'll, we know that the field elevation is next to nothing, so we can pretty much assume that if we get to 400 feet, mean sea level, then that'll that'll uh, be a good marker as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain, and on behalf of Slant Alpha Airways, we'd like to welcome you aboard Flight 514 Service to Mallorca. Departing from the terminal here momentarily, expecting an on-time departure at cruise altitude for the second leg. We'll be about 3,500 feet. Flight time once airborne will be about a half an hour. Welcome in and relax. We'll be underway soon, and thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. 
Uh, we had said that the door time was going to be 3.50 Zulu. And it's now five minutes past that, but we've got a fairly short taxi out. So I think we can make it up in the, uh, in the taxi out, guys. In just a second. I'll have to check on those messages later. Um, three crow pilots are indeed strapped in as well. Good. Um, yeah, so there's 3.55 Zulu time. Let's go ahead and get those doors shut. Hopefully you guys all made it back onto the plane okay. And if not, uh, it's not that long a swim, so you should be able to catch us. So doors are closed. We'll get the seatbelt lights back on. Get the number one restarted. Uh, so that's Mix, Magnetos, Fuel Pumps, Prime it, Clear it, and Start it. Number one, Roars back into life. Okay, the manifold pressure comes normal. Uh, oil pressure comes up right away. Fuel pressure is artificially elevated because the electric pump is still on. But as we shut that off and get the generator turned back on, the fuel Fuel pressure evens out with uh, with the number two. Okay, so everything's still looking pretty good here. We will want to resync the headings. Looks like about a 063. We'll fix it here. Looking good. 063, probably a few degrees off. This one tends to drift out a little bit more readily than the other one. Uh, flight control check. You know, again, we're really checking the outside surfaces, but somebody out on the ramp will uh, double check our movements, make sure that they all move freely and correctly, and they'll give us a nice big thumbs up, and we're good. Laps one, tailwheel can come unlocked, taxi light can come on, and we are ready, and we're going to taxi out uh, to 2-4, whoops, meaning that we're going to taxi kind of in a northeast direction. Here's my Navigraph charts. Do we have a taxiway that goes all the way out to the end? We do. Okay, good. So just north and eastbound on Charlie to uh, the end of 2-4 there. So that's that's going to do it. All right. All right, we're ready to start rolling, guys. So I think uh, our, our departure time of top of the hour should be pretty close. Close enough for government work, for sure. Downwind Sim is here. Alright. Back out to the ramp exit here. Looks like there might be a ramp exit up to our left. Ibiza traffic, Douglas 5, 14 Delta Victor, taxi down runway 24 for VFR northeast bound departure, Ibiza. Oh, downwind sim, we had a bit of a firm landing. Al's just picking on me. Nothing that the DC-3 can't take. I'm worried much more about the passengers than the plane. <laughs> Thank you, by the way, for checking in down with Zoom. We get, get the furry co-pilot has now been trained to greet several key members of the audience, and we're just getting that underway. So those of you who did not get a special greeting from, from the furry co-pilot, please do not fret. More of those will be coming. But down with Zoom, we're happy to see you here. <laughs> yeah, well, thank, yeah, that was him. You can thank the furry co-pilot, not for, not me. Okay, so here's Charlie, and we're going to head out to runway 24, so that is indeed a left turn. Uh, we, on our taxi out, by the way, can get the uh, cowls into trail. And we can check our hydro pressure, which is good. We can probably, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, forego the run-up when we get out there, since we know that our engines are warm and hitting on all cylinders. We're good. So again, east, north and eastbound on Charlie, making sure that, again, if you're, you're going to take off on 2-4, you should be taxiing kind of in a 0-6 direction. So that's 
you know, a nice sanity check to make sure that you're going to the correct runway. So, so far, so good. Um, what else is in the taxi on checklist? Hydro pressure check. Cows can go to trail. And the run-up, which we're not going to do. So, yeah, we're set, guys. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for departure. <laughs> According to Al, we're playing, uh, planning a memorial plaque to commemorate your arrival. Well, memorial plaque at a party. Qualip has uh, re-upped his subscription, by the way. Okay. So, yeah, I guess you, it, it lapsed at some point. You didn't realize. Thank you for, for resubscribing. If I missed that, I'm sure I missed a couple. Oh, yeah, we missed a couple. Uh, so we got... GA Master USA had hit the follow button a while ago. I missed that. If you're still here, I apologize for for neglecting to say hello. We got the subscription from Sim. I think I said hi for that. Qualip did resubscribe, and Moby Dave hit the follow. Okay, so I think I'm caught up. I did miss that one earlier. I apologize. Um, Game Master USA. Uh, just uh, Ori Darkwind wants an extra cushion. Yeah, not a bad, uh, not a bad request. Extra cushion and an extra shot of Jack Daniels. All right, and we're basically going to make a left downwind northeast bound. 3,500 to be on cruise altitude. Speed of traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor is going to be departing runway 24. Left downwind. Northeast bound VFR, Ibiza. There we are as we make. Uh, looks like we could have turned one taxiway earlier. That's fine. A little bit of a hold pad, a little bit of a hold, hold block or something here that we are finding ourselves on. As we are preparing to take the runway, we'll go anti collision on. Tax, uh, landing lights on, taxi light off, pitot heat. And fuel pumps on. We'll get lined up, we'll get the tailwheel locked. Confirm all our temps and pressures are looking good. Left aux. I'm sorry, left main, right main, yep. Okay, good. Check the uh, check the fuel balance in a moment. We know we were running the right main here on the ramp just for a few minutes. Okay, overshot the alignment just a touch. Let's get that lined up. All right, tailwheel is locked. Temps and pressures are good. Engines responding normally and symmetrically. Let's set 45. 45 set. Uh, touch the alignments with the brakes just for a second till the tail goes up. Tails up. Steering with rudder. Level attitude. Plane will lift off on its own. There she goes. Positive climb gear up. Maintain runway heading until 400. Then we'll start our crosswind turn. Well, I'm getting started on the drinks early. That's good. All right, there's 400. We'll nose down, keep building speed, flat, come in. Go ahead and start our crosswind turn. Reduce to our climb power, 25 and 40. Again, the crosswind heading on a 2-4 is going to be a 1-5. So there's 25, there's 40. Uh, keep coming around to 1.5. Keep coming around to 1.5. 
the beast of traffic, Douglas 5, one up to Victor's, clear of 2-4, we're on our left crosswind to left base, and we'll be departing the area to the northeast, it'd be the All right, left crosswind to left downwind. Whoops. No idea, guys. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> All right, so turning around to our downwind heading now, 06. And I think we can get fuel pumps off, and I think that should cover our departure process here. We've got CTXCB checking in. I'll check on that message in just a moment. It sounded like a, a re-upped subscription, possibly, so thank you for that. All right, so there we are. Yeah, let's get the nose down. Let's get up to that... Uh, the RPM's down to 25, manifold pressure up to 40. Yeah, we're on about a 0 06, so it's like we could steer maybe a little bit to the left. Going up to 3500. Alright, there we go. Now we got good forward airspeed. Let's just visually check and confirm that we're on a downwind. Yeah, we are. Good. And then as we continue to climb out, What's the uh, what's the heading that we want? Guess I should plot this on Sky Vector. LEIB to where are we going? To LEPA. So we want to be on a zero five six. So again, essentially, essentially a zero six zero all the way out. <laughs> so we'll just kind of maintain that zero six zero to thirty five hundred feet. Yeah, not quite a down base wind. I think we we uh, made a couple of little minor adjustments. I think we we, we flew a pretty decent pattern on the uh, inbound and the outbound side there. I think I think. And CTXCB says four months in a row of subbing and uh, belly rubbing. <laughs> Very cool. Good to see you back here. Middle of the night for you. I'm not sure what you're doing up so late, but I know that you tend to be kind of an insomniac watching the channel. So. Appreciate you being here, man. Good to see you back. All right, there's 3,500. Over shot just a touch. Let's get it leveled out. Keep power in until the uh, airplane comes up to its cruise speed. It means we got to keep putting in that down trim as the as the speed builds up. I think we can go ahead and get the uh, get the seatbelt signs off, though the auto lean in. Get the cows into, uh, whoops, I want to get those cows into closed, but we'll keep them about 25% open just because we're kind of low altitude and kind of high power here. Let's get the RPMs backed off to 23, manifold backed off to 34. And uh, still keep that trim out at 34. 500, and it uh, looks like we've wandered off of our intended heading, so let's get over back here to a 060, and again, about a half an hour flight, so we took off more or less at the top of the hour, we might have been a couple minutes late getting the wheels up, but, uh, but yeah, we expect close to, uh, close to 1130 to make that, uh, make that arrival in. Uh, altitude has slipped back down. Let's get on our target heading of 060. Let's go ahead and get the heading target heading set in the top half of the Sperry. Looks like we got to trim up just a touch. Get back on 3500. We'll hand the controls over to auto. And then we'll check on our fuel balance situation and see how badly we can screw that up today. I uh, still need another 100 feet. And uh, so now we've wandered a slightly right of heading, so let's. There we go. Got it stabilized right there at 3,500, and uh, 
bring it gently left into a zero six zero. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's hand that over to auto, just like it is. Autopilot, level, and heading. Everything lit up the way we expected. Oh, and I just just bumped that directional gyro. That's what I, that's what happens right now. I'm just trying to zoom and uh, accidentally spin that knob. There's a lot of stuff in the cockpit here. You have to be real careful. I mean, when you want to zoom the view in and out, you got to be real careful where the mouse is hovering over because it's very easy to uh, very easy to do that. Let's see how the magnetic compass shakes out on the 065. Okay, well, it looks like we're about five degrees off then. So we'll shoot that back up. Hopefully get back to a 060. All right, let's just real check, real quick, double check. So seatbelt signs off, mix auto lean, cows closed. And fuel tanks, okay, so the fuel, we gotta check the fuel balance. We got right main and left main selected, okay. Let's see how we're doing with the uh, main tanks. Okay, we wanna burn the left main just down on about four gallons here, and then the auxes are at just over 60, so those are pretty well balanced. So I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to hold on to my phone, literally in my hand, as a reminder that I'm flying in an unbalanced fuel configuration so that I don't accidentally burn the left main down too low. I want to take that down to right to the middle there. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's downwind sim, if you all move over to the right side of the aircraft for the next 30 minutes. Yeah, that's how it was looking on our last stream in the DC-3, for sure. Last time I flew it in the Mediterranean, we did a really good job of fuel management, which is probably the only time on this stream I've ever done a good job of fuel management in this DC-3. <laughs> but we will do it. go ahead and do a, uh, a cabin announcement real quick, so bear with me. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude of 3,500 feet. We've turned off the fastened seatbelt signs. Your cabin crew is going to come around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and fresh hot out of, out of the oven downwind sim pies so relax and enjoy the flight downwind sim you missed the first leg we had uh, we had leftover valentine's message message candies so uh, thank you for arriving with a much better food selection for leg two here all right as i continue to hold on to my phone as a reminder that we're okay we're gonna left main is maybe a gallon higher i think that is close enough Picked up four pies at the store tonight, says Downwind Sim. All right, let's go ahead and switch over back to the aux tanks. The balance uh, is, uh, so right aux here. Let's, let's not switch to the wrong aux tanks. Let's switch the right to the right and the left to the left. Okay, good. There we go. Now I'm put the phone down. Of course, I did get another message on that that I need to take a peek at. Plenty to share, says Downwind Sim. Awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, some more messages that I can check later on. All right, I do think I need to take another quick break out of the cockpit, though. But uh, it won't be too long. I mean, we're like I said, this is a pretty short lag as we make our way from Ibiza to Mallorca. Take a real quick break out of the cockpit, and then let's start looking at the uh, arrival plan. Looks like it's going to be pretty similar to what we just did, kind of landing to the southwest. Uh, but we'll do all that briefing in just a moment as we fly in the beautiful... Aeroworks, Douglas DC-3 for X-Plane 11 in the Mediterranean. Oh, oh, there we go. There's some, there's some uh, land ho. So we'll give you this view as we make our way to Mallorca. So the pain meds are kicking in, says Ori, and uh, hopes that we'll grease these next two and everyone will forget the bad one. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. I, I always say that the first landing is a warm-up for the other two. Uh, for the, uh, for the, the first landing is a warm-up for the remaining ones, however many there are. All right, very good, guys. We'll be back in the cockpit for just uh, yeah, in just a moment. Uh, don't have too much longer before we start briefing our arrival into Mallorca. So sit tight, and we'll start that in just a few.
Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Okie doke. Back in the cockpit, have we started to uh, see our destination yet? Maybe, possibly. Looks like it wouldn't hurt. Well, well first of all, looks like we're about a 058. So let's make sure all these instruments agree with one another that we're on a 058. It's going to be two clicks that way, right? Yep. And then let's confirm that uh, our heading from here, and again, we, I mean, we did a little bit of a downwind, so we're maybe from here. I mean, like we, uh, so, I mean, if we really want to get picky, I don't know how far of a, something like that. So it looks like we should be on about a 054 to, uh, to hit our destination. It does look like we've got some land over here with some higher terrain, so I think we can maybe shade over about five degrees to the left. So we'll kick that about five degrees that way. I and mean, since we've done 060 for a little bit, we'll do 050 for a little bit. Uh, terrain, I mean, we can kind of see up ahead that there is some higher terrain. Let's see. So the higher terrain appears to be to the left of the airport. So if we want to kind of keep that terrain to our left, we should be okay, and we should be kind of heading in toward a lower valley in the middle where the airport might be. It's a little hazy to see it this far out, but so far so good. All right, let's, uh, yeah, no wind correction since downwind. So now we're not because we're simulating clear skies. The uh, actual weather uh, here was not going to be conducive to VFR. So we were cheating the weather a little bit tonight. So we're in clear, clear skies, calm winds. Uh, but you're, yeah, you're correct. Obviously, there would be a bit of a wind correction for dead reckoning, but uh, not tonight. Um, we can, by the way, we do have uh, both a VOR and a uh, NDB we can use to cross-check our position. And the VOR kind of puts us on a downwind, so we can maybe really navigate to that 113.3. We're at LEIB, we're going to uh, L PA. Yeah, so we can use we can use that Mallorca BOR 113.3 just as a cross reference. 113.3, let's go ahead and get that tuned. And it's slightly ahead to our right, so. So we'll kind of split the difference there. We, 055. Whoops. That's not the target heading. That is the current heading. So now I've bumped them out of sync again. <laughs> also have a nice um, distance reference. So that'll help us kind of plan descent and that sort of thing as well. So, all right, let's fix that. I, I bumped that out of sync. Had to check in with Sheeds. It's good fixings. Was issuing holds for Sarnak Lake. It was so busy. Wow. Oh, opinions on this DC-3 versus the other one in the orchestra store. Downwind Sim, if you mean the V Skylabs, uh, I do. I did own that. I actually, well, technically do own that. I don't currently have it installed. But, yeah, I can give you uh, a little bit of a rundown of pros and cons if you'd like. The V Skylabs, yeah. So I'll do that in just a moment. So uh, remind me if I, if I don't. Um, so that's a 043, I guess. And, yeah, I, I bumped that off accidentally. So, bear with me while I let the headings kind of shake out again. 050, 050. Looks like I want to, yeah, so this is what I meant to, to adjust to the right. Looks like I want to fly almost maybe a 060 with 
the VOR a few degrees to the right of that. And 33 miles to go. Alright, so again, dead reckoning cross-checked with uh, radio navigation. We can tune that. We can center that if we want to, but it doesn't really matter. Um, let's look at the airport diagram. Figure out what we want to do for landing. Again, it looked from the it looked from the VFR sectional, the water down VFR sectional that that sky vector provides, that the runways are approximately in that same 0, 06 and 24 configuration. Might be off by you know 10 degrees or whatnot in either direction, but let's just see what they have listed here. It's uh, LEPA, and uh, that we will select that. We will hit the taxi, and we will go to airport information. Yep, six and two four left and right. Uh, where's general aviation? So military east and west. Terminal here in the middle. And so GA is down here at the southeast it looks like. So we'll plan a left pattern to runway 24 left. Again, kind of very similar to what we did into Ibiza. We'll stay slightly to the right of the runway. We'll fly a left 90 degree turn, a left 90 degree turn, and there. And so this is 058, but we'll, we'll say round figures, the runway heading is um, you know, six, so you know, 60 and, and 240. So on the downwind, we should be you know, roughly a zero six zero. On the uh, final, we should be roughly two four zero, and then the base leg would be uh, about a three three zero. Roughly, you know, plus plus or minus a couple degrees, but VFR is not that precise anyway. Uh, means by the VOR, we want to be at one thousand feet. What is the field elevation? Yeah, essentially nothing. Elevation there is 8. Elevation here is 7. Look like that said maybe 27 there, so it's slightly taller on that side, but still essentially zero uh, round figure. So we'll go 1,000 feet for our pattern, ele uh, yeah, pattern elevation. And if we're 3,500, that means we've got 2.5 thousands to lose. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to open. 2.5 thousands to lose. We're going to use 3.5 miles per thousand to do it. So that means nine miles prior to the VOR, we can start that descent. So we'll say, I mean, we'll just round it up to 10. Looks like we've got 16 miles to go before we need to do that. And airport should be kind of coming into view here over towards the left. But uh, still a little bit out with the, this kind of X-plane haze going on. So let's take a quick run through the engine gauges. Yeah, we can actually close those cow flaps up a little more. Get a little more optimal temps out of the cylinder heads, but everything else is looking good as far as temps and pressures. Looks like we're a little bit above freezing here. Well, almost 10 above freezing, so we don't have to worry too much about moisture. And uh, how are we on mains? Are just below 50. Auxes are just above 50. Uh, are, am I on the aux tanks? Did I switch over to the auxes? I did, right aux. And left ox. Okay, so we're good. Everything's everything's lining up um, satisfactorily for now. Downwind Sim was asking about the V Sky Labs. My feeling about the V Sky Labs plane um, is that it was, uh, you know, as of about a year ago, it was a little bit better when it came to being, you know, completed systems. But the AeroWorks at that time did not have the operating fuel system. You had the left ox. That just meant all tanks active. Um, you had a few other things that weren't fully modeled. You didn't have the. Uh, you had a conventional mix, you know, mix system, you know, mixture operation rather than the auto lean, auto mix, um, uh, emergency rich. I'm sorry. Yeah, auto lean, auto rich, and emergency rich settings. Um, so, so that mixture system has gotten complete. The, the fuel system has gotten completed. Um, what else was there? There was a couple other little things that, that oh, we, we now have a working tailwheel 
Uh, even though that that was a, a our custom mod, our friend Josh M get told us how to do that, but we now have a working tailwheel. So this Aeroworks has gotten much more complete since um, the, the time that I purchased the V Sky Labs. So I would say that the, as far as systems completeness, this this version is now on par with the V Sky Labs, more or less, minus a couple little things. Um, so that this is this is comparable as far as uh, as as its systems fidelity. Uh, as far as the way it flies, I'm told by people who have a lot of experience in both that the V Skylabs handles a bit more realistically to the DC-3, or handles a little bit more true, I, I guess. Uh, again, I don't I don't have any real-world flying experience, so I don't have a direct comparison. I think this one fly, hand flies pretty beautifully, and uh, I, I like the way it feels. So I don't really have. Again, I've flown both, but I didn't I didn't notice that big a difference to say one was was certainly superior to the other. Um, but the popular opinion seems to be that the V Skylabs one handles a little bit more uh, authentically, I guess. Uh, the big thing, the, the absolute deal breaker for me, and, and the reason that I don't fly the V Skylabs whenever, is the interior modeling. The V Skylabs cockpit, to me, looks very default FSX. Um, this photorealistic cockpit is, is fantastic, is, is untouched. The, uh, the aero, aeroplane heaven one um, that we were just looking at for Microsoft Flights in 2020 looks like it will be very much on par with this. But uh, the V Skylabs one looks extremely plain by comparison. Plain, yeah, plain, plain as in not detailed, not making a pun there. Um, so I just think visually, immersively, this is the much nicer interior cockpit to fly. And because the systems fidelity now is almost on par, then I don't see any reason to fly the V Skylabs one. Oh, the Aeroworks is a bit broke in VR. Good, that's a good point. So I don't, you know, you, you know well that I don't fly in virtual reality at all. Um, so, um, so yeah, that that on, on that score, I cannot, uh, I cannot comment. But for me, you know, flying with conventional flat monitors, I think this one, you know, is, is more or less on par with. The, uh, with the V Sky Labs. So where is this airport, guys? It looks kind of like it should be kind of over in that nook there. There's the town. Is the airport slightly closer to us than the town? I feel like it should be on that side of the island. may be passing it. No? Oh, wow, this is this is just a tiny little upper peninsula. Okay, so um, this island's much bigger than what I thought. So I thought I'm looking down here at this tip. I'm actually looking up here at this tip. So the airport's pretty much straight ahead, should be. Yep, I think I can see it. And there's our 10 mile threshold. So bear with me guys while I take this, uh, into my own hands here. My airplane, my airplane, you cannot have it. Let's go ahead and start a gentle descent to uh, 1,000 feet. We're going to Oh, you know what? I got to real quick do one thing. Let's do a METAR at uh, LEPA. Temperature 6. So mid 40s. Alright, yeah, let's start our descent. 
see if we can catch sight of that airport again. Okay, I feel like it's up ahead to the left there. Alright, yeah, bear with me on the chat, guys, if uh, I'm slightly less attentive than normal as I start my pattern entry here into my Orca. Let's get the seatbelt signs back on. I think we want to go ahead and, well, let's see where we are fuel-wise real quick. Uh, we're pretty well, but we'll leave it in oxes. The oxes have slightly more fuel in them, so we'll leave it in the oxes. Next, we can go back to auto rich. Cal's going to go back into trail. Radio altimeter back to 10x. Seat belt, I'll do this. Did I do seat belts? Yep, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're starting our descent into Mallorca. We ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seat belts. Weather there is in the low to mid 40s Celsius with uh, partly cloudy skies and light winds. Cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash and take care of any last minute needs. So thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Tailwheel is indeed locked. Fuel pumps can come on. And again, here is our here is our airfield right here ahead on our left. Okay, so we're doing a little bit better here on the pattern entry. Descend it at a little bit more appropriate time. Kind of get turned out to a 060 on the heading for a good uh, true downwind. Still coming down to 1,000. We'll make our radio call as well. We got Sheet with the raid. Thank you very much. We're just about to make our landing into Mallorca, and then we got another leg going on to Menorca. So we got lots of flying left to do. Welcome everybody to uh, the Slant Alpha Adventures channel that's just joined us from Sheed. Appreciate the uh, support as always, sir. We're flying the Douglas DC-3, the AeroWorks in X-Plane 11, and we're just about to land in the Mediterranean island of Mallorca with continuing service to Menorca. We've just given our uh, descent and uh, announcements and we're just about to make our entry into the left downwind here. Mallorca traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's a left downwind, runway 24 left Mallorca. So we continue to uh, the RPMs and the power down, get down to about a thousand feet, and we'll maybe go 1100. The field elevation is pretty much zero, but uh, over the town here, we'll just put an extra 100 feet in. Thank you very much, uh, Sheed, for the raid there. Vaughn Hoffmeyer's with us. Snowstorms. Uh, Union Hawk. C. Patel with us. Uh, we got uh, Dapper Bottle. Good fixings back with us. Um, Hallahan is here. Uh, Unread. Uh, Dom Flies. And I think that there will be Chris123 is with us as well. Thank you for uh, everybody that stopped in tonight. All right, are we on a 06? Yeah, I think I've drifted into a... A little bit tighter downwind here. Let's get back down to a 060 on the heading and uh, leveling out here at about 1100 feet. Bringing the speed under control now. We can go flaps one, trim down, counteract that extra lift, power up to counteract the drag. There we are. There's our midfield left downwind. Everything's looking good. Okay. Let's not drift up too much. We want to maintain about 1100, maybe. Start bringing it down to a thousand or so. We'll start spinning the props a little faster, although we're not really adding power. We're just kind of shifting the car into a lower gear here, essentially. I'm still kind of drifting left on that downwind heading as well. Square that downwind leg off. Down a hundred, we can go gear, flaps two. Add some power, counteract that extra uh, drag that we just put on. And again, you know, spinning the props faster, but not really adding power, but uh, we, we put a, a little bit back in. Now we're looking with the uh, downwind turn. Let's go out a little bit further. 
at Beza traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors, left downwind now to left base, runway 24 left at Beza. Guys, can start putting some predictions into the chat, as some of you have already done. Uh, no bot command is needed on this channel for that, just a, uh, oops, trying to go flaps three is what we should be at, there we go. Uh, no bot commands needed on this channel, just a uh, number in the chat, positive or negative, we know you mean a descent rate. No prizes for that tonight, sometimes we do giveaways on this channel where we offer prizes on that. Uh, tonight's just for funsies though, just a, but a positive or negative, we know you mean a descent rate in terms of the uh, moment the wheels touch. And looks like we're overshooting that turn to final just a little bit, so we'll... Go ahead and get flaps four in, get uh, down to about 75 knots. Uh, which is the runway and which is the taxiway? I guess the one with the papi lights, huh? Yeah, there we go. Mallorca traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's uh, final now for 24 left. Mallorca. Alright, glide slope looking good. Center line's looking okay ish. Speed, we want 75 down final, 70 over the numbers. We're kind of in between there, so not too bad. Flaps are set and check, gears down in green. Let's see if we can not bosh the flare timing as badly on this one as we did the first one. Brace, brace, brace. <laughs> Center line. Needs a little adjusting here. There we go. Of course, thank you guys. Appreciate the help. A little more of a gradual lift on the power. There we go. 97. That's much better than the first one. We'll take the average of the two, right? That'll that'll help us out. Right turn off when we can here. Let it roll out. Yoke in the lap to keep that tailwind tail wheel down. Still the flaps. Channel braking looks like we got plenty of time to make the next turn off. Can't quite tell if there's one here, but uh, yeah, there we go. Tail wheel can come unlocked so we can make that turn. And let's get the taxiway diagram up in front of me. Oh, it looks like, yeah, Sierra 1 here. So a nice long roll before that first first uh, taxiway. Whoops, 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 whoops. So, yeah, it looks like this is the first. First high speed is uh, Sierra 1, so. And then GA, we said, was on the southwest side of the field, so yeah, kind of straight ahead. Mallorca traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, clear 24 left Sierra 1, going to GA. Sierra, um, Mallorca. <laughs> I caught a glimpse of that message. I, I got my hands full here getting the plane uh, cleaned up and configured for our taxi end, so bear with me. I caught a glimpse of that that made me laugh. <laughs> All right. Anti collision, landing lights off, taxi light on, pitot heat off, and fuel pumps. Whoops, not generator, fuel pumps off. And cows can go into the uh, open mode. Downwind Sim is a big winner on that. Very good, guys. Very good. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. We'll go. We'll kind of go through the uh, kind of go through the predictions here once we get out to our GA ramp and shut down and we'll get make as quick a turnaround as we can for our final leg of the evening we got one more hop to go guys those of you just joining i uh, just landed on the island of mallorca in the mediterranean we're going to head on over to mallorca one final leg 
tonight uh, before we wrap up. And we're pretty much taking this uh, taxiway all the way out to the end, it looks like, to the general aviation ramp. Papa Charlie checking out. Yeah, I'm doing my best. Oh, we've got a few, uh, a few of you to say hi to, some new follows. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get all that taken care of as soon as we get to parking in here, guys. I apologize. As soon as I take my eyes off of this uh, forward progress is when I tend to ground loop this thing, so. <laughs> so we'll, we'll say all the appropriate hellos in just a moment. Another one there just a second ago. So I, I do apologize. I'm not trying to be inhospitable, but uh, just have my hands full right here for the, for the instant. Okay, so now I think we're in GA land. We'll get turned off. We'll get parked. We'll get uh, turned around. Aiming for a five-minute door-to-door turnaround here, Roach? as they. Well, we're going. We don't need. <laughs> no, we got taxiways. Um. All right. Is that a turn off? I can't. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So this little building up ahead seems like as good a place as any. For you guys to run in, go to the restroom. I'll get the uh, plane turned around and ready to go for our final leg of the evening as we make our way from major to minor. Mallorca to Menorca. And our landing was a Mallorca improvement over the first one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm kind of cheating the parking here, guys, but I'd just like to get the doors facing the terminal for you. So we'll just pull up, get the parking brake on. There we are. Taxi light can come off. If I can find it, there we are. All right, again, bear with me just a couple minutes. We're going to spin through this, uh, this turnaround as quickly as we can. Um, transponder, I think, yeah, we can turn that back off. Tailwheel can go back into the locked position for now. The uh, engine number one only will get shut down. We'll leave the number two. Number two is our APU. We do not have an APU in this uh, 1930s vintage bird, so we'll shut down the number one. We'll get the uh, seatbelt lights off and the uh, doors open so you guys can hop on out. We'll check the, we'll reset the trim. And we'll check the ETA. It was going to be 4:30 on the ground, 4:35 on the block. So we're yeah, we're running about uh, running about seven minutes late. Still, that's kind of been the theme of the night. Uh, let's just kind of hop out and make sure that you guys are yeah, you guys are piling out and uh, piling back in again. The number two engine continues to spin to supply power to the plane. Number one side is where all the boarding and disembarking takes place. So shut that engine down for safety as we make our turnaround. Um. Okay, and the, the anticipated remaining fuel, 169 gallons. Let's spin through and see what we've got. 40, 45 is 9 out of the 85, uh, 9, 10, 12, 125, 30, 40, 50, 65. What did I say? 169. 1,015 is what it should be in pounds. It looks like we're a tiny bit short, but not too bad. Yeah, very close. 1,015, and we have 1,000. We have a little bit extra. Okay, so our numbers are pretty well on, though. Uh, again, we're a couple minutes behind schedule, but uh, numbers are pretty well on. Let's uh, get back to the top, get ready to uh, start leg number three here. We will take a quick second. we got to say hi to some new friends. we got Sheed. Yeah, Sheed hit us with the raid. we got Rusty Winds with the follow. Chris... 123. We got 135. Boomer with the follow button. Thank you guys. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Al's got to hop off. Um, let's run through the predictions. 298, 146, 110. I think was the winner down with Sim with, with the actual being 98. I think we said. At 182, 2176, 53 was Rob Vocker. He has typically more faith in me than anyone else does. Uh, M. Hallahan says 181. 135 Boomer, yeah, so I wasn't sure which was the taxiway and which was the runway. It's the 135 Boomer says, ask Harrison Ford, uh, and then do the opposite, right? <laughs> uh, 
Um, a yeah, huge budget for taxi signs at this place, says Dan Winsome. Yeah. My well, orchestra sees a lot of, uh, of tourism, so they have, the airport authority has plenty of uh, money for taxiway signs. Papa Charlie checking out for the night. Very cool. Okay. Hopefully that I've caught up at least with the... Uh, oh, and Al South says he's hopping off, which I think I said. All right, very good. I've, I think I've caught up with the bulk of the messages. Sorry if I missed yours. Oh, and Al, yeah. Al had had been holding in his, uh, his, his gas there as he was as we were coming down final. So thank you very much, Al, for that. Hopefully you held on until you got out the doors there. Uh, so hopefully I've caught up with the bulk of the messages. I apologize if I've missed yours. But let's go ahead and get set up for that third and final leg this evening as we go from Mallorca to Mainorca, L-E-P-A to L-E-M-H. Uh, no alternate. We're going to try and depart. I said 0450. Oh, boy, and we're going to be a little... Well, we'll file 0450, but we're going to be a few minutes after that, I'm sure. 028, and what's left in the tanks at this point is 152. 180, 3500 is correct. BFR northeast bound is going to still be correct. Everything else there is looking good. Not a heavy. We're still slaying out, but there we go. All right, update the progress bar to match. Get, bear with me as we go. LEPA to LE. Where are we going? LE who? LEMH. MH. All right, there we go. That progress bar should be looking good for you guys now. Um, all right, from the top, again, bear with me as I try to get this thing turned around and, and roll in as quickly as possible. We've set the flight plan, updated progress bar. Uh, Adis and METAR, we, we checked on our way in. We know it hasn't probably hasn't changed, but, uh, again, we're simulating clear skies and calm winds anyway. Uh, so we're cheating the weather just a little bit just so we can do this as a VFR sightseeing tour. Um, so altimeter is going to still be 1013, which in... Uh, you know, Merkin is 2992, which is already set. We know the field elevation here is 24 feet, and that's very close to what's showing on the altimeter, so that has been cross-checked. Good. Uh, no clearance to obtain, as we still have uh, a complete lack of that same air traffic controllers here in the dead of the night in the Mediterranean, as one might expect. So uh, nothing we need to do there, except go ahead and turn our transponder back on, as we still have the uh, squat code of 7000 indicating that we are VFR, so that's back on. What else, guys? Where did I leave off? Navin ADF tuner set is needed, which is not needed. We'll set the radio on center back to 1x. This will tell us when we're at 400 feet for flap retraction and reduction to our climb power. And uh, fuel quantity we already checked, uh, but we let's let's real quick just see. Uh, we'll leave it on the oxus. That's fine. Uh, let's we got the right engine running. Let's flip it over to the left ox to try and balance it out just a little bit. We'll check on that as soon as we get to uh, cruise. We'll check on the fuel balance and uh, try to uh, try to get that sorted out. All right, so we had said airborne time at, at 3.50 Zulu, and we're two minutes away from that. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. On behalf of Slant Alpha Airways, we'd like to welcome you back aboard Flight 514 with service now continuing to Mainorca. We'll be departing from the terminal here momentarily, expecting a roughly five-minute delayed departure. Cruising altitude for leg number three tonight, 3,500 feet. Flight time once we're airborne expected to be approximately 28 minutes. So buckle in, relax one more time, and we'll be underway soon. Thanks again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. As we go ahead and get those doors closed. There we are. Hopefully you all made it back in. If you did not, it is not that long a swim. Seatbelt lights can come on. The okay, we gotta fire up the number one again. It's gonna be mix magnetos fuel pump. Oh, that's the generator. Fuel pump. We'll prime it, clear it, and we'll start it. The startup sequence in this Aeroworks DC3 is not 100% modeled uh, accurately, but as close as they can get it. So there we are. We got it nice and fired up. Oil pressure should come up right away. Fuel pressure you can see on the number one is elevated because the electric pump's still running. Go ahead and shut that off, get the generator on, and we'll see the fuel pressure will uh, equalize. So there we are. Everything's looking good, and the number one starts coming back up to temp. Uh, headings can be synced. So these always tend to drift out, so we'll go by the magnetic heading, which is about a 050 on the nose. So that one's drifted a couple degrees out, and this one five, about five degrees out. So we'll center that. There we go. Everything in agreement now. Light control checks. Again, we'll, we'll show the yokes just to, just to have you guys something to look at, but left, center, right, center, 
forward center, back center. So really we're checking the outside controls, making sure that the control surfaces move as they should. So someone out there will give us the thumbs up. We don't have any indications in the interior of the cockpit that they're moving as they should, but somebody out there will be looking and give us a big thumbs up there. So we're all good. Uh, trim, I think we already did neutralize at the, the end of the last leg, and we did. Flaps 1 can be set for departure. Again, on a nice long runway like this, you really wouldn't use Flaps 1 on a DC-3. Uh, I just prefer the way the plane handles on a Flaps 1 departure, so I tend to just fly it as a, uh, I tend to use Flaps on departure regardless. Um, and then I think the last thing to do is get some taxi lights on and the tailwheel unlocked and we're ready to go. Going to taxi back out to that runway 24 left. We're at a left downwind departure, so we're kind of going back the way we came. All right. All right, yeah, we're good. Parking brakes coming off. Yeah, we're steering with the brakes on the way out until we uh, until we get enough airflow over the rudder to have rudder authority. But for taxi purposes, we're steering with differential braking. Would be steering with differential throttle as well, but I only have the one throttle control here in front of me. So that'll in the real plane, you'd use differential throttle <coughs> to save some wear and tear. And uh, some heating on those on those brakes on the taxi out. But for me, since I've only got the one throttle that moves in tandem, you know, we kind of have to kind of have to do it all with the brakes. And again, we're t departing on runway two four. We want to kind of make sure we're taxiing in a zero six direction, just as a sanity check. And indeed, it looks like we are. My York traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's taxiing out to runway 24 left. We'll be making a left down with VFR with eastbound departure, Mallorca. Gives anybody a heads up that might be coming in to know that uh, they should look for us on our way out, but we'll make a couple more announcements just to update. I, I, I doubt there's very much, if any, traffic here to worry about, but just to do the proper thing on VATSIM, make those. Uh, Make those announcements that are critical to the idea that you may be appearing on a runway at some point soon. All right, on the taxi out, we can do a few things. We can check our hydro pressure, those two white gauges over there on the right hand side, they are normal. Get our cowls into trail mode. See if I can do this while I keep the plane roughly headed down the center of the taxiway. And uh, again, we will probably not do a run-up at the end since our engines are nice and warm and magnetos are functioning normally. The only other thing to do then is to give the flight attendants their heads up. So we'll do that when we get a little closer. I guess while we're on our way out, we know that it's going to be kind of a, uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Kind of another zero six zero, kind of another extended downwind. But we might as well plot it on Sky Vector and get a, uh, get an on course heading so we know what turn to turn to once we get clear. LEPA, I'm going to, where are we going again? LEMH, I think it was. Yeah. So really a 073, so I think we'll uh, kind of aim for a 070 more or less. Of course, really, you want to be checking these crossing taxi bikes, make sure there's no traffic. But again, we're, we're pretty sure we're alone here. I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem to be any planes around. Yeah, don't hit those expensive taxi signs, says Downwind Sim, that's right. Alright, 
grab a sip of the beverage here. Switched over, switched off the Red Bull onto the plain water since it's kind of a late one tonight. Let's go ahead and ring up the cabin here. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for departure. Well, it's got a little further to go than I thought, maybe. <laughs> That means sit down and pass the pie. Well, we'll pass the pie once we get up to cruise. It's a short climb. It's only 3,500 uh, feet cruising altitude. So we'll get those pies passed around once we get up there. Right, I think we'll see as, as close as we can to a rolling uh, departure here. My Orca traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, will be taking runway 24 for a VFR left downwind, northeast bound departure, 24 left at Mallorca. Anti collision lights, landing lights on, taxi light off, heat to heat, fuel pumps. Oh my goodness, another raid coming in. Boeing Sky Pilot is with us as we are flying our Douglas. We are Douglas Sky Pilot tonight. Thank you, Boeing Sky Pilot, for the raid. We appreciate you being here. We're just about to depart from Mallorca to Mainorca. Some Mediterranean island hopping in our Douglas DC-3 tonight. So bear with me. I'll say hellos to those of you entering the chat in just a moment. But do uh, I do hand fly these departures. So I will have my hands and eyeballs busy for just a little bit, but thank you very much. Tuba Flight back with us. Tuba Flight, have, haven't seen you in a little bit, but it's good to see you. Tell Mr. Spy I said hello. Alright, so I think we got all the lights already set. We just need to get this plane lined up with the uh, lined up with the runway. And then we'll get the tailwheel locked, and we'll get the part the uh, yeah, power set. I think we're good to go. Shot just a touch. Let's get back and lined up. Temps and pressures all looking good. All in engine indications normal. Engines responding normally and symmetrically. Tailwheel locked. 45 coming at you. There we are. 45 set. All right, corrections with the brakes until tail goes flying. We'll start correcting with rudder. There we go. Yeah, tail's up. Again, flaps one departure is not textbook in uh, this plane with a runway of this length, but I just like to hold that level attitude with the flaps one plane. It's just going to lift off on its own. Here come up. Maintain runway heading as we go. Keep the uh, trim down. Let the uh, plane build speed. Looking for 400 feet. Get those flaps in. Did we get the gear up? Yeah, we did. Okay. 400 feet, we get the flaps in. Get the nose uh, trimmed out here. Try and get that 110 knot climb. Just go ahead and start our left crosswind. Pull down to our climb power, 25 and 40. 25 on PMs, 40 on the manifold. 
turning to a, uh, so it was a 2-4, so we're turning to a 1-5. So there's our 1-5, there's our left crosswind. We can also get the fuel pumps off here. And make sure that we've got the nose down. We're coming up on that 110 knot VY speed, climb speed, good. And we'll start our base turn here, I'm sorry, a downwind turn. My work traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, clear, runway 24 left, entering left downwind. We'll be continuing VFR northeast bound, Mallorca. To a 06 heading. Hold out. Continuing that climb, 25 and 40. We're going to increase the throttle just a little bit, get that to 40. Redialed in, okay, 060. 25 and 40. Climbing at 110 knots, which is good. And we're only going up to 3,500, so it's going to be a pretty quick climb. Let me just uh, run through the laps up we did, fuel pumps off we did, I'm pretty sure. All right, yeah, we're good, guys, we're good. I seem to be ahead of the airplane. Let's see if I can say hello to anybody else that stopped in. Beach House is with us. Beach House, good to see you back here. Thank you guys. <laughs> it's not easy being tuba flight. Lots of friends to uh, to visit. Yeah, I love those engines, Beach House. This is a, a glorious, the AeroWorks Freeware Douglas DC-3. It's actually published as a C-47 Skytrain, but it is a freeware product for X-Plane 11 and the sounds are fantastic, as you so rightly point out. Those Pratt and, Wisp, Pratt and Whitney Twin Wasp engines. You got a twin wasp on each side, so you got actually a total of four wasps. James Martin's doing Shenandoah training tomorrow. Awesome, man. James Martin's one of our our virtual Washington DC controllers, and he's starting his uh, radar training. Very nice, man. Very nice. Yeah, I'm I'm sticking with uh, just the just the tower cert for now. For now, I say it's been two and a half years, but. It, it shall continue. <laughs> Two and a half years in counting. There's our 3500. We'll go ahead and level it out. Your speed slipped a little bit. I like to keep it at about 110 in the climb. But it'll build up now that we're at 25, and we're going to keep that manifold pressure up to 40. So we'll keep that climb power in, even though we've leveled off, but that'll let us get up to uh, our cruise airspeed here. I did. I said level off, but I, I haven't. I've, I've overshot the altitude. Got to continue to add as the plane builds speed. Continue to add down trim to keep it from climbing. And we had said the heading to our next airport was really about a zero seven zero. So I think now that we're clear, and, and we're still climbing. All right, let's get. Let's get established on a 070. Let's get let's get descending back to 3500. Let's start to pull the power down. Got a few few things to do here, guys. So bear with me as I get uh, cruise checklist taken care of. So 23 and 34. And I've still got to lose some altitude. I'm way overshot. Get the cowls closed. Get the uh, mix. We can find a spot that it clunks in there. There we go. Auto lean. Still climbing. Come on. Yeah, I'm not doing a very good job. So as the as you get to that cruise altitude, and you level it off. You keep the power in as the plane builds speed, but as it builds speed, it's going to want to climb. It's going to the more faster you go, the more lift it creates, the more it wants to climb. So you got to as you build up the speed to that cruise airspeed, you got to keep adding down trim to keep it from climbing. And I didn't do a very good job of managing that. Also, not doing a very good job of managing that 070 heading that we want to be flying. But we'll get it on the 070. We'll get it on 3500. We'll hand the controls back over to Auto. I do need to. 
Yeah, I know I've got to check that fuel management. I've, I've probably overburnt that one that one tank down now. So that'll be our goal, was to get that all rebalanced out by the time we get to our final destination tonight. So there's 3,500, there's 07, oops, there's 065. 3,500, 070. Alright, let's hand those controls over to Auto. Let's get on top of that fuel management before it gets too out of hand. Autopilot heading level. Alright. We do need to uh, we do need to check those headings and make sure they're synced. Gotta probably check that terrain too, make sure that we're gonna clear that okay. What's it say as far as uh So that's 2,800 minimum safe there, so we should be fine, but we'll keep an eye on it. Um, but anyway. Oh, James already has Chesapeake. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Rob Walker, I love cheesecake. I don't think that's what he said, man. So che ches cheesecake Chesapeake would be cheesecake with Old Bay seasoning. Anything you say Chesapeake here in Baltimore means you put crab meat and Old Bay on it. Um, hang on just for a second, guys, as I get the uh, fuel situation under control. Uh, yeah, that left ox is just about dry, so let's run everything off the right ox just for a little bit to balance that out. Whoops. Yeah, I figured I overdid that. Should have only run it for just a minute. Okay, so our goal now is to burn the right aux down to under 20, and then we'll switch back. I mean, the mains are pretty well balanced. So our goal now is to burn the right aux down to under 20, and then we'll switch back to the mains for our arrival, and that's going to be our last leg tonight. So just have to keep real good track of that right aux. Meantime, yeah, no, James Martin, yeah, we wouldn't... Uh, we wouldn't typically put uh, Old Bay and crab meat on a cheesecake, but when you order chicken Chesapeake in this town, you're definitely getting chicken with crab meat and Old Bay seasoning. Good fixings is heading direct pillow. All right, man, have a good one. Thanks for, for stopping in. I think I caught up with everybody. And thanks again for that uh, wonderful support, Boeing Sky Pilot, for uh, for sending us that raid. All right, let's see. We've got the uh, fuel situation managed as best as we can. Uh, spin through the engine gauges suggests that temps and pressures are all normal, everything reading as it should. Uh, we are reasonably certain. Okay, we're flying over. We could we could tune this VOR. We're probably flying pretty much right over that VOR there. We got the cheer bits from Vo Boeing Sky Pilot. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate the support as always, and uh, if we really wanted to, we've got uh, Menorca NDB. Oh, we got a uh, yeah, Menorca NDB and VOR. So we got 112.6. We'll we'll tune that in, and uh, that'll that'll also give us a distance reference. We assume. Whoops, 112.6. So we kind of know we're pointed more or less right toward it, but we'll just kind of confirm that. Looks like we need to come a little, bit, a little bit to the right here, guys. A lot to the right, in fact. So if we're currently flying at a 0.5, 8 to 9... Uh, looks like we want to turn kind of about 20 degrees right, maybe. Another thing to do, well, let's... Again, let's make sure we've got terrain clearance here. Go ahead and pop that into uh, 10x. So we've got, we know we're flying 3,500 feet above sea level, but we've got over 3,000 foot clearance on the terrain below us. I don't think any of this is going to, it doesn't look like any of this is going to rise up high enough to worry about. Again, on the chart, it said 2,800 was sufficient. 2,001, uh, 2,800, yeah, this, this sector here. 2,800 was plenty of altitude, so I think we're going to be okay. 2,600 down there, so either way, we're fine. Um, 
Boeing's cry pilot has to duck out. Yeah, absolutely. Have to be an adult tomorrow. Always sucks when that happens. I do too. Uh, it's a little, a little bit of a late one tonight for us. Ten after midnight here, Eastern time. But, uh, but yeah, we're gonna be wrapping up as soon as we make this next landing as well. But thank you very much again for the support. We appreciate it. All right, but at any rate. So we're heading more or less toward the airport now. We're 47 miles away. Okay. Yeah, it looks like our manifold pressure has dropped inexplicably. So 23 and 34 is kind of where you want to be. So there we are. We'll get that set. That'll give us the, that'll give us a few uh, extra knots there. And. Uh, make our way to our final destination. We anticipate touchdown time of 18 uh, on the blocks at 23. Yeah, we're going to be late. We got we got off the ground, what, probably about 10 minutes late. So I think it's going to be closer to 12.30. ZDC, we all act like children, says James Martin. Yeah, kind of a prerequisite joining the community. <laughs> All right, so bear with me, guys, as I find it out and I need. I cannot forget to watch this right off because we do not want to burn this out to zero. Got about another 10 to 15 gallons to go. The left ox was about, what, 15 gallons? Yeah, maybe 10. So we don't want to lose sight of that, guys. But we can start looking at uh, what we want to do when we get up to our destination. I think real quick we can do a weather briefing there. Again, no controllers in this area. It's the dead of the night in the Mediterranean in the real world, so not that we would expect any. LEMH 320 at 4, so kind of a northbound wind. A few clouds at 1600. You know, again, we're not simulating that. Temperature 6. The q and is going to be pretty close to standard. Uh, again, we're simulating clear skies, calm winds, just because this is kind of a VFR uh, sightseeing type flight. So for this series, we you know occasionally take liberties with the weather like we have tonight. So that's, um, but again, just to be consistent with any other traffic that may be coming in and out, we'll go ahead and use this as a guide for which runway we want to choose. So 320 at four. And uh, let's look at our, look at our runway choices at Maynorca. L-E-M-H. Maynorca, there we are. Yeah, no, I know. I said it's slightly above. Oh, yeah, uh, one zero. I keep. Yeah, you're right. I said one zero two three. I keep thinking. I said one. Yeah, one zero two four. It's more than slightly. It's actually substantially above. I, I do that a, a lot. I, I I know it's one zero one three. So it's technically it's one zero one three point two five. So I conflate that in my head, and I think it's one zero two three. But you're you're correct. Uh, so there we go. Uh, LEMH, and uh, yeah, we did that already. Taxi diagram. There we go. Okay, so at this run, at this airport, we got a 19 and a 1. And again, we said that the wind was coming out of the north, so we're going to land on runway 1. Um, it is. It is a towered field, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. It generally has an air traffic control tower. So we wouldn't really have a standard pattern entry, but I, I, we're kind of coming in on a left base. The other thing that we can do, you know, really, if we want to make a standard pattern entry, we could come in from the northwest. You know, we're going to come in kind of on this southeast bound heading to a 45 to downwind. So we may try to do that just to be good and proper here. 
the other thing we can do is we can just come in kind of, you know, if we don't shade up to the northeast and come in on this 45, the other thing to do is, is just make a direct entry into this left base from down here. So, we'll see. I don't, I doubt that there's much that sim traffic to contend with. Yeah, there's not really any. <laughs> Nobody but us chickens over here. So we can kind of, kind of, we'll play that by ear. We might just make the direct left base entry. Just to, uh, just to shorten things up. Two miles out, and again, so kind of the same calculation. Again, the touchdown elevation. Uh, actually, touchdown elevation here is 300 feet, so this one's a little bit higher field elevation than uh, what we experienced the last couple times. But oh, and uh, oh, let's do two things. Number one, check on our fuel situation. Number two, I think that I get the cruise stuff done. Did we get into auto? Yeah, we did get into auto lean. Did I get seatbelt signs off? I did not. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that and make our quick cabin announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude of 3,500. We've turned off the fastened seatbelt sign. Your cabin crew is going to come around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and Cheesecake Chesapeake. So relax and enjoy the flight. Uh, so that's done, and again, seatbelt signs off, mix auto lean, cows closed. Did I do that? I believe I did, yes. Um, nope, cows closed. Yeah, there we go. And how did that shake us out on temps? Uh, looks like we want to open those cows just a touch. Let the engines breathe just a little bit, so there we go. Mustafa here. Moose, how are you, man? We were talking about you earlier. We posted up the link to your your uh, interview with Evan of Flights and Expo. Uh, very nicely done, sir. Appreciate you doing that. And I uh, got a lot of cool questions answered about the status of the event. I think that's the big that's the big question. I mean, I think at this point, most of us flight sim enthusiasts kind of know what to expect from the event should it go off as normal. But the big question on everyone's mind is, what's the status of the event? How are they going to determine the status of the event? And I think the reassurance from Evan and the team is uh, really, really reassuring that, that, you know, no one's going to get locked into making any decisions. You know, we definitely said, Mustafa, hit the follow button as well. Thank you for that, Moose. Appreciate it, man. Um, but I think the reassurance that you can go ahead forward now and support the event by, by showing your commitment to attend, if you're at all thinking about attending, um, $70 for Saturday and Sunday, $80 uh, gets you the Friday Captain's Corner seminars as well, so $80 for the full weekend, 15 if you decide to do it online. Um, your card's not going to be charged at all until at least March, possibly April. And uh, for right now, just the commitment that to say that you intend to attend uh, will help them out hugely as they get into March and start making event status decisions. The more numbers that they can show have committed, uh, even even under the understanding that you know that everything is refundable if, if, if things don't go your way or if you need to back out for whatever reason. Uh, if the event doesn't go forward, or if you personally need to uh, change your status, you know they're going to be completely 100% flexible with uh, refunds and cancellations. So, um, so to to support the event, to help them make that decision, to help them show the developers and vendors and uh, exhibitors that they've got a whole bunch of people coming out to San Diego June 4th through 6th. Go ahead and register. Like I said, you're not going to be in danger of losing anything. And if nothing else, sign up for the online, $15. I mean, if nothing else, consider it a $15 donation to support the event, just to show to these vendors you know, that we've got lots of interest in, in doing the event one way or the other. So again, June 4th through 6th, Town & Country Resort, San Diego, California. My flights are booked, my hotel's booked, my registration is, uh, is covered, so we are good to go. I'm definitely going to be out there. I know you, Moose, are, uh, Moose you're, uh, you're going to be out there as well. So. Yeah, man. Cool. Um, so, looking forward to it big time. 
Uh, but just uh, just fingers crossed that everything goes the way we want it to with the health situation and we're able to ho hold that in-person event. But again, just to show the uh, vendors, exhibitors, and developers uh, the event support. Go ahead and get over to www.flightsimexpo.com and get your registration in. If there's any chance you think you're going to be out there in June, get that registration in now. Again, the card's not going to be charged until at least March, if not April or May. So if, if for whatever reason you, you, you want to commit to it now, but you might have to back out later for your own personal health reasons, even if the event does go forward again, they're going to be 100% flexible with that uh, up until the day of. And the, the hotel has even said that they're completely 100% flexible as well, up to 48 hours. So even just two days out, if you have to cancel, you won't lose anything on the hotel fees. You won't lose anything on the, uh, on the re event registration. So again, flightsimexpo.com. And Moose, again, I appreciate you stopping by, man, and, and, and thank you so much for that, uh, that follow and that support. Tell you what, real quick, let's go ahead and post that link. A lot of, a lot of folks on the channel now um, probably weren't here toward the beginning of the stream, so let's um, get that link to the, uh, the YouTube course. I know it's on your Twitch as well, but at least on YouTube it's uh, going to be up there permanently. So get that up in front of me here. There we go, guys. So if you had any questions about how, I mean, I've kind of given you the rundown, you know, talking about the uh, flexibility and the registration fees and all that stuff. Um, but if you if you really want to, it's generally easier to find on YouTube as well. Says Moose. Yeah, good point. Um, but guys, if you, if you really want to hear what I just said out of the Flight Sim Expo team's mouths, um, you can check that interview out that I've just posted there. Mustafa was kind enough to, to host that one-on-one -on -one interview with Evan Ryder, the uh, kind of one of the chief organizers of Flight Sim Expo. And uh, you can check that out there. Most of your questions answered, but mostly what they were, what they were talking about was the status of the event. How are we doing? Yeah, we're kind of... We do, if we're going to come in on a right, I mean, a left base rather, we do want to have the airport kind of scooch up to a, you know, a heading that's slightly left of us. So that is indeed what we want to see. Matter of fact, 13 miles out, we can probably shade this over a little bit more to the right. Flight Sim Expo Gawainian is uh, www.flightsimexpo.com. It is a huge conference. Um, it at least has been huge in the past. Obviously, we don't know what the true status is going to be this year. Very health restriction dependent. Um, but in Orlando 2019, it was something like 2,000 attendees and 60 or so uh, developers, vendors, and exhibitors, something like that. I'm, I, don't, I don't have the exact numbers memorized, but it was a huge conference. Uh, flight Simulation and Aviation Conference. So uh, vendors like PMDG and uh, TF, uh, T, TFDI and other um, aircraft add-on manufacturers. Uh, Honeycomb had an exhibit out there. The VATSIM, VATUSA, uh, IVAO, Pilot Edge, um, OZCON Network. Tolis. I don't know if Tolis had a booth or not, but it's it's all kind of um, flight sim hardware and software developers, and even some real world aviation um, uh, companies and, and services represented out there as well. Looks like there's our airport in sight. Let's go ahead and so we're 10 miles out. Let's go ahead and fly this thing for real, guys. Bear with me if I'm uh, a little slow to respond and chat from here forward. My airplane. Let's go ahead and get our descent in. Oh, again, you know I always shut the Temperature six, okay. What's six translate to? It's low forties, okay. We'll power down. Let's get some. Uh, let's get some lighting in here. Seatbelt signs can come on. Owls can go into trail. Mix to auto rich. I was there in Orlando, yes sir. I was actually in the booth for Vatstar, even though I my, my official um, 
uh, affiliation with that star had ended by then. I was uh, I just as a favor to them, helped uh, man their uh, helped man their booth that year. I had uh, stepped down from that star at the end of 2018, but in June of 2019, I uh, just kind of decided to help them out by helping them staff that booth. Probably said hi to you. Didn't know who you were. Yeah, no, I, I my stream was just cresting 200 followers by that point. So. Um, even though I had been doing it for a year by that point, it was still kind of building up steam. Yeah, it was a fantastic, huge event. All right, let's do a quick... Um, Min Minorca traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's left base runway 1, Minorca, we're 3,000 descending, about 6 miles southwest of the field. Ladies and gentlemen, just about to descend, well, we actually started our descent into Minorca, so we ask that you return to your seats, fasten your seat belts. Uh, weather there is currently in the low 40s Fahrenheit with uh, light winds and uh, cloudy skies, partly cloudy skies. So uh, the cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash and other items, take care of any other last minute needs. Thanks again for flying Slam Alpha Airways. Uh, fuel tanks are, are, yeah, fuel tanks need to be at mains. We probably have burnt out. Yeah, there we go. Right main and left main. Probably overshooting the runway center line at this point, so we'll get that sorted out in just a moment. Left main and right main. Okay, we're good. Now, still at 2,400, so it's. Looks like we're. Are we past the point where we're. Uh, we should be turning in on a final right now. <laughs> six mile final. Six mile final with 2,000 feet. Actually, probably pretty good. Let's just continue to pull power down and get the plane slowed down. Bear with me, guys. Not a lot of work to do and not much time to do it. There's 120 knots. Let's go ahead and go flaps one. So Mix Auto Rich Cow's Trail tail wheel is indeed uh, locked. We get to get the fuel pumps on. Flight attendants prepare cabin for arrival. Yeah, we did overshoot. Alright, let's see if we can get down to 100 knots. We'll get flaps 2 in the gear. That'll help us uh, control speed and descent. Here comes gear. Here comes flaps 2. Predictions, guys. Positive or negative numbers will be taken as a descent rate. No bot command needed. Just uh, your prediction of the vertical descent rate the moment the wheels touch. Um, just for funsies tonight. We do giveaways on this channel from time to time. But uh, for nights, just for uh, tonight's just for your practice as well as mine. All right, so there we go. We got uh, 90 knots. Go flaps three. Okay, we got we did the flight attendant announcements. Spin the oh, we're, we're showing a little, little low. Let's get the nose up. Arrest the descent until we get back into some white lights. Got one more notch of flaps to go. We're at 80 knots now. We want to go 75 on final, 70 over the numbers. Yeah, didn't didn't manage that. Uh, there we go. One one white light there. Didn't manage that uh, pattern entry too well. That's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to do the full uh, 45 to downwind. I feel like it would have made that pattern flow a little bit better, but there we can go. Flaps four. A couple of white lights there. But it's alright. I had all that stuff I wanted to say about Flight Sim Expo, so I didn't wasn't quite as well prepared for that descent as I wanted to be. Uh, so we'll make a left close traffic if we go missed, right turn off if we uh, do make it down successfully. Now let me get the airport diagram in front of me. If I can find it. There we go. Now, now we're a little high. Yeah, right. 
right, keep those predictions coming, guys. Again, but normally it would be last call for a prize night, but uh, tonight, like I said, it's just for fun, so keep them coming. All right, so then we're back on two reds, two whites. Let's get back to, to about 75 knots on final. We got the Scotty Too Hot. He re-upping the subscription right there. Thank you so much for that, Scotty. Appreciate seeing you here. And again, we made one firm landing and one fairly nice smooth landing. So let's see if we can uh, go two for three with uh, the good ones here. Flirting with being just a touch high. Trying to get the nose down without letting the speed get up. The props are full forward, gears down and green, flaps are set and checked. Again, left pattern if we go miss, right turn off if we land. Got it a bit easy tonight with the uh, simulation of calm winds and clear skies, so not too much of a crosswind and control for it's just about keeping it nice and stable. A little bit low now. Thank you, CTXCB. I don't know who was that. <laughs> Koala trying to distract me on short final. That one tends to be the, the good one because that, in my ear, that thunderclap comes in nice and firm. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get the power out nice and smooth. Those up. Not float it too bad here. This is good. This is really good. 72. Alright, get the yoke back, get the tail down. Still the flaps. I floated it just a touch to get that, but not too bad. I didn't I would wouldn't say we ate up a whole ton of runway. We got plenty of runway left. We did good here. We did good here. I was happy with that one guys. Get the tailwheel unlocked so we can make this turn off. Try not to ground loop it on the turn off. We can help ourselves. <laughs> there we go. 72, 72. Yeah, it makes up for that first one. That first one was, uh, that first one was the one to remember for the wrong reasons. <laughs> All right, where are we going? GA ramp is kind of on the south side here, so it looks like over here to the right. Uh, off the runway, we go anti-collision off, landing lights off, taxi light on, pitot heat off, and uh, fuel pumps off. Cows can go open. While you work at traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's cleared off of uh, runway 1 onto Delta, Mallorca. I believe it's Delta. I mean, it was the first turn off, it looked like, so. Delta, 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 can I help you, help you, help you. Control tower slightly to our left? Yeah, it looks like Delta. So, yeah, straight off Delta, it looks like the control tower slightly to our left. Britain, some that great butter. That's right, man. That was some great butter. Thank you for that, whoever that was. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a... Man, it looks like we got to spend some money to repair the... Uh, potholes in the taxiways here, guys. Fortunately, we got that DC-3 suspension. It can handle that easily. All right, there we go. There we go, guys. There we go. All right. Let's get up. Let's get pulled up in park. Let's check our fuel and ETA situation, and we'll wrap up for the night. <laughs> winner, winner. <laughs> Cheesecake Chesapeake dinner. <laughs> Alright. And again, I'm going to spin it around. I don't know, the parking blocks here are not too well defined. I'm going to spin it around so we get the doors facing the terminal because I like to be nice to my passengers. So here we go. And when I say terminal, I mean trailer. <laughs> Apparently. A little bit more. Uh, that looks fairly lined up. Parking brake on. Taxi light off. 
tail wheel can go relocked. Uh, let's run through the shutdown checklist, guys. Uh, Downwind Sim says, nice job tonight, at least the parts I saw. Right, and that's because you didn't see that first landing. So, uh, back to the chat. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let me, um, let me run through the... Uh, run through the, sh the shutdown. We'll go back to the chat. We'll go back to the predictions as well. Uh, taxi let off. Parking brake on. Tailwheel locked. Transponder can now be shut off. Uh, we can go ahead and cut the left and the right this time since we are done flying for the day. Seat belt. Uh, so mix. Sorry. Mix magnetos and then generators. Uh, we'll get the seat belt signs off. We'll go ahead and get the doors open. Get the uh, trim reset, and then we'll check on the fuel and ETA. So, whoops. Yeah, there we go. Trim reset. Just double check and make sure you guys are uh, all piling out of the airplane into the terminal building. Hope that you uh, enjoyed the flight, guys. Let's, uh... So we had said 518 on the ground, 523 on the blocks. We knew we were about 10 minutes after that, and that seems to have held up true. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. Five, 675 pounds... Uh, should be left in the tanks. Let's see how we did. 113 gallons total. Let's see how we did. We knew there's about 15 in the mains, so there's 30. And then in each, uh, I'm sorry, in the auxes, rather. And then in the mains, it looks like we got 35. So there's 35, and 35 is 70. And then about uh, another 15 each there, so makes uh, about 100 gallons. We predicted 113 gallons left, which is good. And we had said 675 pounds. So let's compare that. 657. Wow, very good. So, um, so the flight times were a little bit long, but I don't think that was because of the um, the calculations. I think we just kind of had trouble keeping up with the schedule tonight. Uh, but the fuel estimates were really good. If you want to see how I do those those calculations, guys, uh, a tutorial playlist over on the YouTube channel. Uh, there's a there's a tutorial for flight time and fuel estimates that you can check out. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and finish up this shutdown then and. Uh, Start thinking about saying our goodbyes. Moose says, nice landing. Yeah, I was very pleased with it. Thank you. Um, matter of fact, uh, we can go ahead and shut off X-Pilot. And we'll do a replay of it. Uh, all the levers can come down then. Radio Master and Inverter can come off. You guys have all piled out into the terminal by now because we're going to go ahead and shut the uh, plane down. Uh, Radio Master Inverter, no smoking. Nav beacon lights can come off. The uh, fuel tanks can go into the off. Oops, yeah, fuel selectors go off. I think that's... Uh, is that off there? Yeah. And then off on this side as well. Cowls can go closed. Just keep the uh, water and dirt... Oops, uh, yeah, water and dirt out of them while we're sitting here on the ramp. And then we'll get the uh, doors closed. Okay. All right, very cool. Let's take a moment, guys, and uh, check check out that replay. I was pretty pleased with how it looked. Let's see if we can get a tower view coming in. There we are. All right, very cool. Uh, while we're watching that, we can uh, talk about what we got coming up on the channel. We have, let's see, let me get the schedule in front of me. This Friday, we're going to tempt fate again. We, the last time we flew the Fly J-SIM 727, we flew it from Denver. We were heading towards Seattle. We were doing this as a shared cockpit flight with Melvin Leroy. And uh, we wound up in a one-hour taxi hold at Denver and not having enough fuel to make it to Seattle. So we wound up having to set it down in Boise. Denver's got the Friday Night Ops again this coming Friday. So we'll tempt fate. We'll see if we can get it from Boise back to Denver and then on to Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, just as a solo... Uh, solo cockpit with just me this time um, but we'll see if hopefully we can get a little bit less than a one hour taxi delay in uh, Denver this time we'll see how that goes so that'll be Friday and then uh, next week we're back on our normal schedule of Monday we normally fly Mondays and Fridays 8 p.m. Eastern time by the way uh, so next week we get back to that normal schedule the 22nd here we go guys let's see let's check this out yeah not bad at all not bad at all. Gently set the tail down. Yeah, not too bad. All right, cool. Let's wind that back and watch it one more time. Let's watch it from this angle here. 
Oop. Yeah. So we were a little long. We're a little, little over the over the blocks there, and slightly right of center line. Okay. Was the wheel right wheel? Well, okay. Yeah. So so right of center line for sure. Nice and smooth though, and then we kind of got it back over there on the rollout. A little tiny bit of a bounce there. No, or maybe not. Maybe it's just the, the elevation difference. So yeah, a little right of center line and a little bit long on the blocks, but not too bad at all. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. All right, we'll watch the tax again as we talk about the schedule. So yeah, Mondays and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern time normally, guys. Um, we talked about uh, this coming Friday and the Slant Whiskey Adventure and the Fly JSM 727. Then uh, Monday, we'll uh, continue the Wings Over New England training flights on the 22nd. We'll be back in that Mooney Ovation uh, in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And uh, we were going to resume those training flights. The Boston Virtual ARTCC, speaking of Flight Sim Expo, the organizers of that, also have these this long series 30 training flights that they have on their site. And we've completed 1 through 5, VFR 1 through 5. We're going to try and finish up VFR number 6 and then move on to IFR flights 1, 2, and 3 if we have time. Uh, we'll get as many of those done as we can. There we go. We see the landing lights switch over to the taxi lights. Very cool. Uh, so that'll be Monday the 22nd. If you want to see the full show schedule, hit the uh, About tab underneath the picture window there. you got the full show schedule there. We've also got, if you want to know what's coming up in the short term, you can check out our Facebook and our Twitter page, Slant Alpha, on both of those. The links across the bottom of your screen. And, uh, and then again, the full show schedule again posted on our Facebook page, in addition to underneath the uh, About tab. Also over on our Discord server, which you are welcome to join and continue this chat 24-7. YouTube has all of our old archive broadcasts which you can check out and we've also got some tutorials over there if you're new to VATSIM or uh, need some assistance in composing a route or what to say to air traffic control or like I mentioned earlier estimating flight time and fuels uh, there's some tutorials over there to uh, to help you in those regards also like I said all of our old flight uh, broadcasts which this one would be posted uh, about 24 hours from now uh, to uh, to join those so please feel free to check that out and subscribe we uh, who was the big winner? I guess, was it was it Downwind Sim? What was the what was the predictions uh, for the, the touchdown? I think the, the actual wound up being something like 72. So uh, 146, 127. Rob Valkyrie with the 73. I think that was going to be the big winner there. 105 from Downwind Sim. Yeah. So I think Rob Valkyrie was our was our big winner. Wallop said 400. He didn't have any faith. He saw that first landing. Uh, Them's my shoes. Says 88 was uh, in the ballpark. Very cool. I know Qualop said 400, and then he was the one that hit me with the thunderclap. So he was trying to rig the game. <laughs> <laughs> Who else did we say hi to that uh, we missed at the end? Let's see. Uh, Dabber Raccoon was one of the predictions. Very cool to see you here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, some other new names popped in there at the last second. Uh, Dabber Raccoon. Anybody else? Oh, and Sim Caesar. Um, Gifted a uh, tier one sub over to Moose. Hey, thank you very much, Sim Caesar, for that generosity. Again, your um, your generosity, guys, your your continued support of the stream is what makes the Slant Alpha Prize Vault possible. Uh, so when we do giveaways on the channel, we do normally do that uh, landing rate guessing competition, and of course our monthly raffle. Which, if you guys are new to the stream, you can accumulate those alphabet points and cash those in one thousand at a time for one entry into the raffle. 5,000 at a time gets you six for the price of five, and we do those drawings at the end of each month to where you can uh, choose any of this wonderful Slant Alpha merchandise, what is that? wonderfully tacky Slant Alpha merchandise, or if you really don't want my crap, you can choose a, a gift card to either Amazon or xplane.org. So, um, so we'll pull again that ticket at the end of the month, so you got another week and a half or so to save up those Alphabets points there at the bottom left of the, uh, of the chat panel. All right, I think that is going to wrap it up, guys. Who are we sending the stream to? i got to see, like, who is even still on at this late hour? Our normal late night... Uh, late night contestants are not on, so... Uh, don't know. So we got... Uh, Qualip says, I really brightened the morning. Thanks for the show. Yeah, absolutely, man. Appreciate you joining us. Um, it looks like we've got Aviator doing some air traffic control in uh, up in Canada. I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be on. Can't. That doesn't look like there's a lot of traffic there. And then, uh, so I think we will go ahead and send the raid over to Aviator. E H V 
V-I-A-T-O-R, Aviator. I guess that's a Canadian pun there. <laughs> I don't know him that well, but he looks like I said he's doing air traffic control over on uh, VETSIM right now. Hopefully he'll be on for a little bit. He's uh, also got his advertising Flight Sim Expo, so uh, another another partner of that event as well. So we will send it over to him. If you want to see how this VATSIM thing works from the standpoint of the uh, control scope, you can check him out. Stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, we will see you on Friday. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Hope that you'll stop back and see us as you join us live from Boise, Idaho in the FlyJ Sim 727 Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, in the meantime, be safe and healthy in your own travels and your own adventures, and we will uh, kick it over to Aviator here in just a few. Uh, we'll talk to you then uh, on Friday, guys. <laughs>